Next, it's a hearing on crime legislation before the House Rules Committee. You will see members considering the way the bill will be handled once it arrives on the floor of the House of Representatives. This $15 billion bill calls for a fifth of its money to be spent for prison building, 50,000 new police officers, and $7 billion in other crime prevention programs. The Senate passed a $22 billion crime bill last November. We will hear first from the chairman of the Rules Committee, Democratic Congressman Joe Moakley of Massachusetts. This hearing runs about three and a half hours. The Rules Committee will now come to order. There's been a request for filming of portions of today's proceedings. Are there any objections? There's also been a request for taking of still photographs during today's hearing. Any questions? No questions. Also been a request for person who wants to paint a picture of Mr. Solomon. Is there any <laughs> objections? <laughs> yeah. uh, the matter before the committee is the bill H.R. 4092, the Omnibus Crime Bill of 1994. I'd like to welcome everybody on the committee back from their uh, work period back in the district, and as I'm sure that you were told by your constituents, as I'm sure that, uh, that I was told by my end, that the crime bill that's before the committee is the most important piece of legislation before the Congress. Everyone from the President of the United States to the man on the street wants to see this bill passed and passed quickly. The crime statistics in this country today are staggering. You just can't pick up a newspaper without reading a terrible story about a senseless murder or a random act of violence. And as members of Congress, we must act to do all that we can to rid our streets of crime. The President is working with us and has placed this at the top of his agenda. In a speech yesterday to law enforcement officers, he, he urged the Congress to act immediately on this crime package when he stated, we simply have to do everything we can to move forward in helping the American people to reduce crime and to say no to those things which they ought to say no to and to give our young people some more things to say yes to. I couldn't agree with him more, so I think we should get down to business. And for those of you who are just uh, focusing on this matter, I'd like to take a moment to bring you up to speed on how we got where we are today. Uh, on March 18th, I sent out a letter to every member of Congress asking them to send their amendments on this bill to the Rules Committee by noon of Tuesday, March 22nd. The response from the members was overwhelming, with 180 amendments being, being submitted on issues from the death penalty and prison construction to mandatory sentencing for repeat offenders and racial justice. With all of these amendments before us, the Rules Committee conducted two marathon hearings where testimony was taken from over 100 members. We heard very thoughtful, passionate testimony from all of these members uh, whose opinions on what can and should be done varied, but whose common belief was that the issue of crime is their top priority. Having heard all of the testimony and all of the arguments, this committee is set today to report out a resolution which will structure the debate and the amendment process on the House floor. And after the opening statements are made by uh, Mr. Solomon and Mr. Goss, uh, uh, the, I will entertain a motion. As I said, the President wants this bill on his desk as soon as possible. Members of the House want to begin debate tomorrow, and the American people are demanding action now. So let us waste no more time and get to the business of, of hand. This time, I'd like to recognize the ranking minority member, Mr. Solomon, for any opening remarks he may have. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me uh, first of all welcome you and the other members of the body of, from both sides of the aisle uh, back to work. Uh, it was an interesting period uh, back in the district where uh, my constituents were concerned about jobs and the economy. They were concerned about crime uh, that this deal, uh, that this bill uh, supposedly deals with. Uh, and they were concerned about the irresponsibility of this uh, United States Congress in dealing with the deficit. Those were the three overwhelming issues back in my district. But um, uh, again, it's nice to be back. And, uh, Did anybody mention Whitewater? 
Um, as a matter of fact, um, you know, uh, on May 10th, I'm going to be participating in Whitewater. It is the Whitewater Derby up in the Adirondack Mountains. It's one of the most famous, uh, as a matter of fact, um, Bob Kennedy, uh, shortly before uh, he was uh, lost his life, was uh, up in the Adirondacks, and we participated together. Uh, in the Whitewater Derby. So we welcome everybody up there. It'll be interesting to see Jerry Solomon participating in Whitewater. Mr. Chairman, let me get on with my remarks. Uh, you know, just prior to the Easter recess, this crime bill was pulled from the floor, uh, and it was not pulled at the request of we Republicans. We were quite willing to negotiate a fair rule on Wednesday evening, March 23rd. Uh, many of us stayed in town uh, in order to, to try to accomplish that. Uh, but the majority draft rule that was revealed to us would have made in order just 15 Republican amendments out of some uh, 82, I believe it was, that were filed with this body. 15 out of 82 amendments. The other uh, 65 or 70 Republicans would have been gagged. They would not have been able to offer what you just referred to as meaningful and thoughtful uh, amendments, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. And it would have made in order 45 Democrat amendments out of 98 filled, filed. 45 out of 98. In other words, almost half of the Democrat amendments were allowed, yet very, very few of the Republican amendments would have been allowed to be voted on on the floor of Congress. But beyond that inequity, we had given the majority in advance a list of 17 priority Republican amendments. These were Republican amendments from members of the Judiciary Committee. In other words, those were the most thoughtful uh, of the members that came and testified before us. They were probably the most knowledgeable members. And they had 17 amendments which are vital to this bill. And of those 17 priority Republican amendments, only six were made in order under that draft rule that we did not adopt last Wednesday, March 23rd. When we raised as a protest over this on the House floor, the majority leader, Richard Gephardt, with all due credit to him, promised to meet with us, which he did on Thursday, March 24th. And it was very clear at that meeting, which was attended by myself and uh, Mr. Bonnier, your, your whip uh, from your side of the aisle, and a member of this committee, it was very clear that a more bipartisan and fair rule would be negotiated. And yet, none of our members have been invited to any negotiations on such a rule. I personally canceled a trip to Korea, where we were vitally fighting for uh, some uh, steam turbine contracts for uh, the General Electric Company. And I stayed here in the United States and waited for a call in order to sit down and to try and negotiate what would be considered a fair rule that would uh, let every member of this body, both Democrats and Republican, participate in it. <clears throat> And I can only hope that the Democrat leadership has negotiated a fairer rule uh, with the majority on the committee and the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. We won't know that for a few minutes yet. But Mr. Chairman, finally, I just want to take exception to a statement made by the President of the, of the United States at the Justice Department yesterday when he said, and I get my dander up over this, we don't need to waste the time of the American people with frivolous or political amendments and delay. He's talking about members of this Congress on your side of the aisle, members sitting on your committee like Mr. Gordon over there right now, members like me, and members throughout this, this whole Congress. He's saying we don't need to waste the American people's time with frivolous or political amendments and delay. Now, I can understand that perhaps to the President, anything offered by Republicans might be considered frivolous or political. But most of the amendments filed by Republicans and Democrats alike, and I ask you to go down the list of 180, are serious and sincere amendments. Mr. Chairman, you referred to it when you talked about the thoughtful uh, testimony given by the members about their amendments. So you ought to be as riled as I am about such a, a ridiculous statement. For the President to characterize these as being frivolous is an insult to this House. It's an insult to these members who have taken the time to work on these amendments. And believe me, they are all serious about solving our crime problems on both sides of the aisle, Democrats alike, and their ideas at least deserve an airing on the floor of this House. And I think in fairness, I should also point out that the President has yet to even submit his own crime bill to this Congress. This bill here is not the President's bill. 
It isn't even here yet. And for him to blame us now for trying to write a tough and comprehensive bill is a little hypocritical since he has not even bothered to, to file his own bill. I hope by this markup of this rule today we can arrive at a fair and a bipartisan process that is going to let members of this House work its will on the floor. Then and only then are you going to get a bill that the American people can be proud of. Mr. Spe Chairman, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time, but I had to get that off my chest. Okay. Uh, any opening statements from this side of the aisle? Over this side of the aisle? Jim, do you have an opening statement? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I think Mr. Solomon has laid it on the line, as he should have, and I support his statements wholeheartedly. We all know that crime is an important issue in this nation of ours. Ever increasing, but nothing done to control it, to abate it, to eliminate it. It's getting worse day by day, hour by hour, and we must do something about it. While this uh, body and this Congress dilly-dallies with it, crime still goes on. And I don't see that the problem is going to be solved unless there is unity on both sides of the aisle trying to solve the problem, not trying to uh, do away with the thoughts of the Republicans on this bill, because we have good ideas too. And I don't discredit the good ideas that the Democrats have, but crime is not a partisan matter. Man on the street does not ask whom he kills, whether he's a Democrat or Republican. I know in my uh, home county, a young boy 15 years of age murdered his mother and his uh, sister, who was younger than he is. A crime <laughs> never be forgotten. But at the same time, we're here hassling over the problem that we all face. Number one, it is top priority. Crime is top priority. We know that uh, along with health care reform, that we must solve these problems, and solve them we will with unity and not dissension. So I call upon the members of this body to work together, allow the amendments in order, allow an open rule, time notwithstanding, because we have the time to hammer out a good bill if we take that effort to do so. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer, do you have an opening statement? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief and simply say that I'd like to associate myself with the remarks of Mr. Solomon and uh, our Republican Chairman Emeritus, Mr. Quillen. When Mr. Solomon said it, it was the first time that I had heard that the President was referring to amendments offered by members of Congress as frivolous, and I think that uh, uh, that really is uh, an attack on this institution to have the President basically uh, out there dictating to us or trying to dictate what kinds of amendments that we should be uh, offering or allowing here. And uh, I hope that that uh, is not a policy or pattern that we're going to be seeing in the future. And uh, I hope that we can allow for what Mr. Quillen is going to be offering in a few minutes, an open amendment process which will allow these very thoughtful ideas from both Democrats and Republicans to be considered so we can do what the President and I think everyone else wants, and that is bring out a crime bill. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Frost. It's interesting. Um, I guess, uh, you know, when you serve on the committee for a while, you do remember things. And, um, of course, Mr. Quillen was on the committee in 1981 when then-President Reagan uh, tried to, and in fact did, actually dictate the rule for consideration of a major piece of budget legislation. It is not unprecedented for a president to express an opinion, president of either party, on the type of rule that should be developed uh, by the Rules Committee. In fact, uh, President Reagan marshaled the forces on the floor and actually overturned a rule that was uh, reported by this committee on a reconciliation bill. With all due respect, I think the Republican amendments had been shut out, and that's why uh, that was done, Marty. 
I'm just saying that it is not, uh, not without precedent that a, a president of either party should take an interest in what's going on in this particular committee and express his views on But I subject. think that there's a difference between an attempt to expand opportunity for debate and limiting it. And frankly, that, that, and fact, frankly that, President, Kennedy, uh, President Clinton here is making an attempt to limit the prospect of debate on what he describes as frivolous amendments. Oh, in fact, that amendment that, uh, that President Reagan uh, sought on the floor uh, greatly restricted amendments. In fact, it closed out all other amendments. He was successful in advocating a closed rule, a Republican closed rule. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Chairman, is this uh, bill uh, a novel bill to be discussed for the first time on the floor, or has it been in committee for I understand it's been subject to some 72 hours of uh, hearings. I guess that would take several. That, that would take several days in to yeah. get that in. Would the gentleman yield? Uh, this bill has never even been reported from a committee. There is not even a report to accompany it. Uh, has there been any hearings on, on absolutely that? Absolutely none on this bill. Absolutely none. And I'd love to have the report to read it before we take it up on the floor tomorrow morning. And I'm not being facetious. No, I'm, I'm not, inquiring. I'm, I'm serious. Well, in, in answer to both uh, the ranking minority member and to Mr. Gordon, hearings have been held on every component of this bill. So, I mean, whether it was uh, typed by the president or anybody else, the, the, the hearings have been held on every so, factor. Of the, would, would my good friend yield? So I would love to yield. Let, let me just give you an example, all right? There is a provision in Title II in this bill which strikes minimum sentencing for people bringing 100 tons of cocaine into this, uh, into this country. No more minimum sentence for him or her, okay? That has never been debated in a committee. There's never been a hearing held on that issue, and yet it's a part of this bill. And I have a feeling that my amendment, which is going to strike that section and put those amendments, uh, put those minimum sentences back in, is not going to be allowed here today. That's what the point we're trying to drive home. I'm informed that that subject was the subject of markup in the Judiciary Committee. No hearing. Well, it was subject to a markup. In the, they did address it. So, go on, if I may reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman, it's my understanding that the Judiciary Committee had several hours of debate over several hour, over several days on this bill already. Right. And now it'll be coming uh, to the floor, um, uh, I guess, for a, a, a several days more. Yeah, we, we expect uh, this could run over two weeks uh, on the floor. So w w with the several hours and several days already in committee, we're going to have we're going to have even uh, two more weeks of uh, debate on the floor with this. Gentleman's correct. All right, thank you, Chairman. As you yield to Mr. Goss, could I just give you a letter addressed to you from uh, me and uh, Congressman Jimmy Hayes, a good Democrat, in support of my amendment, which is probably not going to be allowed which would, have, which would uh, allow me to reinstate uh, minimum sentences for violent drug uh, uh, dispensers in this country. Without objection. Okay. For the record. Mr. Goss. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I very much relate to your remarks about coming back from two very useful weeks uh, out in my district and around this nation talking to people. And you're right. People are demanding action uh, on a crime bill. But they want a good product. They don't want just any crime bill. Uh, they've seen Congress uh, pass stuff before that had unintended consequences that were adverse rather than beneficial. And I think they're looking for us to be a little deliberative about this. And frankly, I think we've got a great opportunity here. Every member has just come back uh, from a chance to be out talking to the people we work for, uh, getting their views, their ideas. There's no doubt this is a number one question out there across the country. Uh, we've had a dose of reality about it, I am sure, and everybody has a different view. And I think that's all the more reason why we should have as open a process as possible. If, by your estimate, it's going to take two weeks to deal with this bill, would we be better off to take three weeks to get it right? It's that kind of a question I think we're going to be debating here a little bit today. Another problem that has come up, and certainly I heard it loud and clear, is we've got all three branches of government involved in this. We have, obviously, our legislative branch, we have the executive branch, and we have the judiciary. And they're all having problems. Uh, and to get everybody pulling the same way at the same time is what's important. It isn't important how much horsepower you have if it's going in different directions. You want to all get it going the same way. And that, it seems to me, has not happened yet. And perhaps that's the role the president can help us uh, play as we go down the road on this. Um, 
The President has not sent up a crime bill. We do have a compilation here of a congressional uh, series of ideas that have truly been through markup, as you point out. They have not all been through a deliberative hearing process, but they have all been through markup to make that point. We will end up with a, con a congressional crime bill. It will be a product of the Hill, not a product of the White House. The President said he is going to sign it in a minute, if I read his quote properly. Now, I think that is wonderful, but I think that is a challenge to us. That means we darn well better get it right, because if he's going to sign it in one minute and not spend much more time than that on it, then we had better spend the time and get it right up front. I was very saddened uh, when I left here before the break. I had advised several members of the 180 amendments we had. This, many of the sponsors came forward to members of the Rules Committee, as we all know, and said, how can we proceed? I really want to get my amendment up. I want to get this debated. I want to have this considered. What is your advice? My advice was go to a colleague on the other side of the aisle and talk to him or her about the area of concern you've got and see if you can get a bipartisan program, a bipartisan amendment here. We've got a much better chance of getting bipartisan amendments uh, debated than just partisan amendments based on previous history. Uh, and I'm sorry that that has apparently not worked. When I got back, I was greeted with this, uh, this, this uh, article in one of our uh, Capitol Hill newspapers that said a, a block uh, is going to uh, get together to try and make sure we have openness in rules. I think it's wonderful that a block of members is going to get together and, and, and uh, ensure that we have open rules, but I think it's a tragedy that they feel they have to do that when we have the ability before us to come up with a, I think, a very balanced rule which will provide for ample debate on each of the elements that we propose to put in this omnibus crime bill. Obviously, there's controversy, but uh, obviously uh, we would be better off doing it right than doing it wrong. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you very much. Any other opening statements? Any closing statements? <laughs> Chair will be in receipt of a motion. Mr. Chairman. I move the committee grant a rule making an order unless otherwise specified in the rule only those amendments printed in parts one and two of the report to accompany the rule to be considered in the order and manner specified in the report the debate time also specified in the report. The amendments are not subject to amendment except as specified in the report are considered as read and are not subject to a demand for a division of the question. All points of order are waived against the amendments printed in the report. The rule provides that if more than one of the following amendments relating to the subject of habeas corpus is adopted, only the last adopted will be reported in the House. One, the amendment by Representative Hyatt of Illinois. Two, the amendment by Representative Derrick of South Carolina. Under the rule, the Chairman of the Judiciary Committee may at any time offer amendments on block, consisting of the amendments printed in Part 2 of the report with germane modifications. The amendments on block are debatable for 10 minutes and are not subject to amendment nor demand for division of the question. All points of order are waived against the amendments on block. Original proponents are permitted to submit statements for the congressional record. The chairman of the Committee of the Whole is permitted to postpone consideration of a request for a recorded vote and to reduce to five minutes the time for voting after the first of a series of votes. The rule provides one motion to recommit. Mr. But chairman. Before the uh, motion is put, uh, I, I, I haven't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks. Finally, if the House passes H.R. 4092, the rule provides for a hookup with a companion bill, H.R. 3355, with a Senate amendment. The rule makes it in order to take H.R. 3355 with a Senate amendment from the Speaker's table and to consider the Senate amendment in the House. The rule makes in order an a, motion, a motion to concur in the Senate amendment with an amendment inserting in lieu of the proposed Senate matter the text of H.R. 4092 as passed by the House. All points of order are waived against the motion. If the motion is adopted, the rule makes an order a motion that the House insist on its amendments to the Senate amendment and request a conference. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to, before we present the motion, uh, to, to uh, remind the people uh, looking on that uh, the debate has already been made on the amendments, so it's not that we're just taking these amendments without any debate. The debate had already been made, and this is just the second part of the hearing, so I just don't want anybody to think that 
with taking amendments pell-mell without listening to the debate. Mr. Goss. Would you, would you yield? Oh, Mr. Solomon. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, let me just uh, say for the record that uh, basically the rule that, uh, uh, that you have given us now uh, is uh, almost identical to the rule that was offered to us uh, last uh, Monday or last uh, Wednesday, uh, March 24th. Uh, there have been, uh, as I see it, uh, there have been, uh, there's been one uh, Republican uh, member of the Judiciary Committee has been allowed an amendment. I think it's Mr. Schiff. Uh, and uh, along with uh, Mr. Candidate, along with Mr. Candidate, uh, the rest of the amendments by the Republican members of the Judiciary Committee were denied. Uh, and as you look down through the rest of the addendum, uh, there is still an overwhelming number of Democrat amendments made in order, uh, and uh, the Republican uh, percentage remains uh, below 25 percent uh, to the best of my count, and I haven't had a chance to really uh, go through each and every one of the amendments. So uh, we will be opposing uh, this rule out of uh, uh, fairness to the members from the Republican and Democrat members from both sides of the aisle who are being denied their very thoughtful and uh, meaningful amendments, to quote you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I would yield at this point to our good friend, Mr. Goss, who will be carrying this rule on the floor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Solomon. Mr. Chairman, I had, did have a point of quasi-judicial inquiry about Mr. Bielensen's uh, presentation of the rule, which I'd like to ask, if it's permitted. Was it about uh, the rule or about my presentation? I, I can't tell, because it was the I think it was about smooth the way in which you delivered it. It was the, uh, the, the issue, uh, Tony, was the protection for the amendments on block. Uh, as I heard you speak, you said that they were protected on block as amendments. Are they protected item by item or amendment by amendment if an individual sponsor chooses to use the 10-minute rule and pull them out? Do they still enjoy protection? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yes, Thank sir. you. The only other point I'd make, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that the uh, that uh, Mr. Schiff uh, was apparently his amendment was made in order and will get uh, full attention, and that uh, Mr. Kennedy's uh, amendment was made in order uh, on block, I believe, in part of the on block. Yeah, we we are not making it on block. It's up to Chairman Brooks if he wants to uh, make it on block. I, it will be eligible. I, I put on the eligible list. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I have two other points, and uh, one was, uh, it seems to me that there nevertheless were some uh, members of the Democrat Party, the majority party uh, on the committee, that still had some amendments out there that had uh, not been made eligible. Uh, is that correct or not? What, there are a lot of Democratic okay. amendments that haven't been made. Uh, I guess the point I was trying to make in response to this idea that the committee itself of jurisdiction had had all these hearings and markups, uh, they were not conclusive in the sense of unanimity of agreement. And the point I was trying to make uh, was that the, some members of uh, the majority party uh, are a little unhappy that their amendments are not going to be made eligible for the kind of debate that others have who are not on the committee. I understand that. The following question I have is uh, also uh, somewhat uh, quasi-parliamentary in nature, and it's wh what exactly in the uh, on block amendments are the chairman's technical amendments? Uh, if I come to the right point. Number 148, technical amendments. There are page and lines of mistakes in drafting the bill and things like that. They were... They're st strictly Scrivener's errors type things? That's Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Scribner and other people. <laughs> Any other uh, questions on the motion of the gentleman from uh, California? Mr. Ooh, wait a <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Quillen. I have an amendment for an open rule. I think bringing this measure up on the floor of the House with a closed rule, so to speak, allowing just a few amendments on both sides of the aisle is not in keeping with the what the Congress should do and what the membership of this body should do. Crime is a problem. I think they should, we should have the opportunity to debate each idea on the floor of the House, adopt it or reject it, but come up with a bill that the American people will buy 
the American people will applaud and not on a partisan basis. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I open, offer an open rule. The amendment to, to the proposed rule provides for a two-hour open rule for the consideration of H.R. 4092, the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994. Would the uh, gentleman yield? I'd be happy to yield. <coughs> well, Mr. Quillen, your uh, request for an open rule certainly makes a great deal of sense. We've spent uh, weeks now in reviewing the 181 amendments that were offered uh, by members from both sides of the aisle. Uh, most of those amendments were Democrat amendments from the other side of the aisle. And as I look down through those amendments, even those by Mr. Barney Frank of Boston, Massachusetts, uh, who are completely counter to the amendments that I wanted to offer, all of the, those amendments uh, uh, are very, very uh, good amendments that ought to be considered on the floor of the House, whether you like them or want to vote for them or not. Uh, if we were to make an order, all 180, and I'm, uh, I'm sure that if we had this open rule requested by Mr. Quillen, that many of these amendments would not be offered because as you go down through the amendment process, and a number of these amendments are defeated or passed. Uh, it then changes the, the bill itself, and uh, many of these members would not even bother to offer their amendments. Now, I make that point because here we are the first week back from recess uh, where we uh, were back in our districts. And on the floor this week, this entire week, we have one major piece of legislation to deal with, and that is a simple one-hour debate on the motion to go to conference on the budget. Now, that's one hour out of some uh, 60 hours that is, that is available for us to spend on the floor of the House. The only other thing that we have to do is this bill. And if we were to make all of these amendments in order, uh, we, wouldn't, we, we probably could even finish the bill by Friday. Uh, and certainly by early next week, which uh, we probably will do because I understand we may not even have a, a session on Friday. We may knock off and go home Thursday night or whatever. Uh, and yet dozens and dozens of members of this body are going to be denied their right to represent their constituents in offering their amendments on the floor of this Congress, very, very vital amendments. And that's why I would hope that this body would... Uh, would consider Mr. Quillen's uh, open rule amendment. It's only fair to this body and to the American people. And I thank the gentleman for yielding. Well, I thank you for your comments, and they're well put. I would hope that we can have an open rule, and I urge a, a yes vote on my motion. Mr. Bielenson of California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let, let me just respond very briefly, if, if I may. The first is to, to remind members of the committee that, in fact, we are making in order 65 amendments. It's, it's a sizable number, many more, as the gentleman will, will admit, than we usually do. And I'm glad we are. I mean, there are important amendments, most of them, some are more minor than others, but it's a big slew of amendments. I mean, we're not, we're not closing this rule down all the way. There are 65 amendments, which is about as large a number as we, as we ever make, and it's an important subject, obviously, as we've all said. Um, so I'm glad that we're doing that. But don't lose sight of that. We do have two weeks of, of debate ahead of us on 65 amendments, most of them very significant ones. The second thing to remind members, and the public too, of course, is that in effect, dozens upon dozens, I, I think it's fair to say hundreds in effect, of amendments are included in the, bills, in the bill itself. I mean, the, the bill is a conglomeration of various anti-crime bills which have been studied by judici judiciary mainly and, and some other committees too over the last couple of years, compiled into this one bill, which is our friend from New York points out we don't have a report on yet, but nonetheless, uh, there's an awful lot of stuff before us in the bill, in the many hundreds of pages of the bill, which in effect were amendments which were individually offered by Republican and Democratic members of the House. It's not that we're writing the bill here. We've got a great big bill with lots of good stuff in it, probably some bad stuff too, because that happens in all big bills, more good we hope than, than bad. So it's not as if a lot of these a lot of these matters and a lot of these issues haven't been considered and haven't been included in this. I'm, a gentleman would argue that maybe more ought to, and I understand that, but I'm just trying to remind people that there's a lot included in this, which isn't evident because we're not talking about it now because it's in the body of the bill and therefore it won't be subject to debate because it's already there. Secondly, as I said, that um, 
though we are making an order, 65 amendments, most of them very important. Let me say also, if I may, because I think it's important to remind members and, and everybody else too, we do have a committee system around here and in other legislatures for a reason. I mean, we could, I suppose, not bother with the committee and just put the subject of crime on the floor and, and debate it for several weeks and, and have hundreds and hundreds of amendments, and to a certain extent that wouldn't be a bad idea. But it's also true, and all of us who've served in legislatures, either here in the Congress or back home, have discovered, sometimes to our chagrin, over the years, that the more, you, the more, the more careful one is about this, the better debate one has about it, the more witnesses one has, the more testimony one takes from people on the outside, which we're not able to once we're in the Committee of the Whole down on the floor. I mean, the whole committee process of hearing from police people, hearing from corrections people, hearing from folks out there who have some expertise in the areas here is a very useful one. Uh, in fact, those folks who come and testify to judiciary and other committees uh, probably know a lot more about this subject than do, uh, than do we members of the, of the Congress ourselves, some of whom are anxious to offer some amendments, some of which obviously are okay and some of which are, are not. But I just wanted to remind members and anyone else who might be listening that um, this isn't all that's before us. I mean, these, these, these matters which will be offered by some of our friends over here in the other, uh, on the other side of the committee, on the other side of the aisle in the minority party. There's a lot of stuff in here already which is, we're not even talking about because it's already been accepted in the bill itself. Lots of stuff. We could talk about that for days, plus the 65 amendments, plus the fact that we've gone, you know, however well or not well through a committee system, which I think in and of itself serves a very useful and necessary process. Um, you don't always end up with the best results Mr. Goss was asking for good results, and he made a very passionate, a very thoughtful plea at, at the outset, but you don't always get the best results at all by opening up these things entirely on the floor. I think the committee process itself has allowed in an awful lot of, of good ideas. Many of the people who are asking for additional amendments have had subject matter of their own, which they care even more about, already accepted in the bill. It's already in the bill, most of the good stuff. So I just wanted to point, I mean, there's, I just wanted to... Would the gentleman yield? Would my friend yield uh... Only if you'll agree with what I just said. Yes, of course. I, I, want, to, I course. want to agree with what you just said in, in part because, you know, Tony, you and I came here 16 years ago together. No. Same place. I was here before you were. You came here before I did? Yeah. Well, no wonder you're so smart. That's right. Uh, but, you know, you brought up the question of the committee system. And, you know, back uh, when I first got here 16 years ago, we, we had a speaker uh, named Tip O'Neill. And he was the toughest, most partisan speaker that I've ever known or even read about, but he was one of the most fairest speakers. And, you know, he was not afraid to let the committee bill that had been legitimately uh, marked up, let that bill come to the floor under the open rule process, and let the House work its will. You talked about the committee system. And back in those days, you know, in my opinion, and uh, I think the Democrats were a lot fairer in committee. And you, you, you had a real cross-section uh, uh, of committee chairmen back in those days, and they would let them, Republicans offer their amendments. They would even uh, support their amendments. So when you got a product that was ready to come to the floor, it's true, it, it had already had bipartisan input to it. And that's why Tip O'Neill was not afraid to let those bills come to the floor under an open rule. And today, we don't have that. You know, you come from California. I come from New York. The gentleman in the end over there, Mr. Goss, comes from, from uh, Florida. We have terrible, terrible problems with immigration today, with illegal immigrants that is, that is really bankrupting my state of New York, and God knows what it's doing to your two states. It's got to be even worse. And yet, Mr. Hunter of California is being denied his amendments. We're not, we're not being allowed. It's in, it's in here. No, no, not, not the way he wanted his amendment is not in there. But let me, let me. No, it, it is, Jerry. Well, the major immigration-related amendments are all in here. He's got block which was watered down because he couldn't get what he really wanted. No, I he, talked to him this morning before I came. Oh, no, he's very satisfied with the main no, amendment. But the truth of the matter is that of these 180 amendments, you know, you're allowing 43 Democrat amendments, you're allowing 18 Republican amendments, and the rest of these, the body is being denied their right to really work for their districts and what really affects their states. And that is just dead wrong. And so, Tony, what you said was said in all sincerity, and uh, I know you, uh, you're sincere about it, but the truth of the matter is the House is not going to work its will under this rule that you're proposing to us today. The gentleman yield. Yes, I'd be happy to yield to the gentleman from Tennessee. Uh, were, excuse me, did, the, did these members have the opportunity uh, either the, through themselves or a surrogate on the judicial committee, judiciary committee, to offer these at the committee level, and 
Sure they did. did and, they you know, some, and some did, and they were debated and refused. Although most of those that were seriously debated and came out close are being allowed here. And a lot of them, of course, never bothered to take no, it to the Committee true. of Jurisdiction. Did they have the opportunity to do this of at, course. Sub, at the subcommittee level? As far as this gentleman is aware, they mm -hmm. did, yes. And were there a number of amendments that were accepted at the subcommittee level? Oh, of course. There were a lot. I mean, there's a, as I said before, Bart, there's a lot of stuff in here that folks have contributed, you know, both from both yeah. sides over the past many months. And were there a lot of uh, amendments that were contributed at the committee level? Absolutely. Accepted? So, the, so, so these members have had the opportunity to present these amendments both at the subcommittee level and also at the committee level for debate as well as for the opportunity to have them voted on. Uh, and I assume that many of these members uh, had amendments that were accepted at those times. That's exactly true. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, yield. Of course. Uh, we're spending a great deal of time debating <coughs> Mr. Quillen's uh, open rule proposal here. But I think that your argument, Tony, on the committee process is something that we really should look into here. You and I have been spending a great deal of time over the past several weeks looking at possible change in the committee structure. But the, the, the point that you made about the process itself is an interesting one. We have not gotten a report from the Judiciary Committee. Now, it seems to me that uh, members should have an opportunity to look at that before they offer amendments. And if we were actually going through the standard committee process on this, we would allow, we would give an opportunity for all the members who want to offer amendments on the House floor, a chance to look at the report that came from the committee. And there are, in fact, a number of amendments that were proposed by members of the committee that were defeated by narrow margins. And I believe they should have a chance to have those amendments heard on the House floor. So I think that if we had gone through the standard committee process to allow this that uh, that we would have done a lot better in making amendments in order here. But I, it seems to me that we really should allow an open amendment process, and I strongly support Mr. Quillen's effort. General Lady from New York. I thank you. First, a couple of things. I want to understand what my colleagues are saying here, and that basically, as I understand it, it comes down to this. The Judiciary Committee, first through its subcommittees, here's everybody who wants to come before it on the crime bill. And then the subcommittee decides what it's going to keep and gives it to the full committee, they, and they decide, right? So we get markup on the whole committee. Now, people then come up to the Rules Committee with their amendments that were turned down both at the subcommittee level and, and at times the full committee level. But you think that for us then, after where, how long did we hold hearings, Mr. Chairman? About 17, 18 hours? Oh, it was two days. All right. Over so then 80, we hear it all, all over again, sure. all of it. Uh, but if we in this committee uh, decide that some of these things are redundant or repetitive or uh, not germane, that's undemocratic. Is that what I'm hearing you say? You, it's not. It's okay at the committee level and subcommittee level, but we up here uh, just. It's not right for us to make choices or, or to discuss it or to talk about it. Is that about it in a nutshell? Would the gentlelady no. yield? I would, Mr. Quillen. It seems to me that uh, this committee would be useless if we we're going to hear from the committee chairman, mm -hmm. subcommittee chairman, and those who would testify and not have the authority to do what this committee deems to be right. Well, Mr. Quillen, that's precisely what we've done here. I don't what think... What we did was we heard from the committee chair my, and we heard from the it, ranking, it, we heard from the subcommittee. The committee and the ranking said we, we took some, we took, threw out others. If the gentleman, and everybody if, comes back up here with the bills, the amendments that were uh, not the, allowed in. If the and, yet what, and we did what we're supposed to do. And that's we put the bill the in. The gentlelady but would yield. I will. It's my understanding that these amendments were not considered in the subcommittee. Some of them were brought in the subcommittee or in the judiciary and voted down. But in majority, the committee hearings were not uh, uh, in a great deal of detail. And as a result, we have no committee report. We have no printed bill. And I think we're going under the assumption, which is absolutely incorrect, that the, the subcommittee and the main committees involved hammered out the measure. Well, uh, if, if I could, I uh, 
realize, and I'm sure all of us know, uh, even before we start this discussion here, all of us know that the Crime Committee uh, bill this year was cut up in six or seven parts. Uh, part of it we've already passed, and those parts have reports ready for them. May, may I go over those, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. There are committee reports for the Crime Bill, H.R. 4092, page 103 to 464, Title I, H.R. 4030, Victims of Crime. 103 460, Title II, H.R. 3979, Mandatory Minimum Sentencing. 103 461, Title III, H.R. 1120, Assaults Against Children. 103 468, Title IV, Insurance Fraud. 103 463, Title V, H.R. 3981, Life for Convicted on Third Violent Felony. Uh, 103 462, Title VI, H.R. 3668, Violent Repeat Offender. 103 466, Title VII, H.R. 4032, Death Penalty. Uh, 103 467, H.R. 4035, Death Penalty. 103 470, Title VIII, H.R. 4018, Habeas Corpus. 103 458, Title IX, H.R. 4017, <coughs> Racial Justice. 103459 Title 10 H.R. 4033 Crime Prevention and Community Justice. 103465 Title 11 H.R. 4031 Juvenile Prosecution. 103469 Title 12 H.R. 3993 Child Sexual Abuse Prevention. 103392 Title 13 H.R. 324 Crimes Against Children's Registration, 103324, Title 14, H.R. 3355, Community Policing, Cops on the Beat, 10345, Title 15, H.R. 829, DNA Identification, 103359, Title 16, H.R. 1133, Violence Against Women, 103244, Title 18, H.R. 1152, Hate Crime Sentencing, 103869, Title 19, H.R. 3098, Youth Handgun Safety, 103-220, uh, Title 20, 3350, Substance Abuse Treatment in Federal Prisons, 103-321, Title 21, H.R. 3351, Boot Camps, 103-322, Title 22, H.R. 3353, Juvenile Drug Trafficking and Gang Grants, 103-323, Title 23, H.R. 3354, Substance abuse treatment in state prisons. The reports are there for every piece of that. Mr. Chairman, I have with a, with a question. I was just going to ask the general lady if she'd yield for just one moment. Well, the I have to. the uh, member withdraw his motion at the present time. I, have to withdraw. I just want to reinforce. I know we're taking some time, but it's important because our friends on the other side have made a point of this. I want to reinforce what the general lady from my state of birth was talking about that the contents of the bill before us, even though the overall conglomerate bill does not as yet have a report ready, it consists of, first of all, 12 bills which were ordered reported about a month ago, which do in fact have individual reports. So those individual matters within it have committee reports. There are 12 and on the topics that the general lady are related, plus an additional 11 bills uh, which are the text of individual crime bills passed by the House the first session of this, of this uh, Congress, which have not been passed by the Senate, which are again incorporated into this bill, all of which, of course, have, have their own report. So the truth of the matter is that for 90-some percent of the, of the stuff that's in the, in the overall crime bill, there have been committee reports, they are available, and they touch on all of these various matters that the general lady spoke to. Just want to reiterate so that everybody understands that this is a serious process, which we have pulled together work which has been done over the past couple of years by committees of this House and in some instances by the entire House itself. That's what's before us, plus the additional amendments which we're making in order to. Well, the gentleman, the gentleman yield for a question on this. Well, I, the time I, is that of the general lady. Could I, could I simply ask if if all of these items that were outlined by Mrs. Slaughter um, were put together here and we've said that there were all these different reports, why in the world didn't they just submit to us and to our colleagues a report from the committee on this bill? Well, that's the committee report then? I mean, the, you, you, you've provided the full committee report for members to consider amendments here. 
as you know, we really did this bill differently this year by breaking the Is there anything else in it at all? Or? So that, that's yeah. the whole committee report. Well, that's the basis on which we're determining what, how we're going to proceed with the crime bill. Reference, I mean, you can find where these reports are, Mr. Farrar, if you want them. So, Oh, so in other words, that that is the committee report. Well, I think that should be submitted for the record as the committee it's a report. It's to the committee report. It's not what These are components have of the committee, committee report. report. They're all it's the committee report. Fine. That's well, the question that we have. I mean, I well, think that okay, Mr. Bielinson talked about the committee system here. Now, the committee system calls for a report to be submitted to the Congress before consideration of it. Now, you very eloquently outlined all of these provisions there. It seems to me that we should have a report before us if we're going to proceed with this. Well, gentlemen, lady, yield further. I will. Thank you. I, I understand the point you're trying to make. We had ten and a half hours of testimony here, and some of it was on some of those reports that you have referred to there, and there is, in fact, a body of text that uh, a member can go back and look to. A great deal of it was not. Our colleague, Mr. Bielinson, said 90 percent, 10 percent. I don't know where you, Mr. Bielinson got that number. Mr. Brooks indicated that it was a somewhat different number. But at any event, there is still a, a body that we don't have that a member can't go to look at. And, and the problem we've got, if you go back to the 101st Congress and the 102nd Congress, you discover that we had maybe 50, 45, 50 amendments to the, to the crime bill in, in both of those years. This year, we had 182, uh, if I counted right. And it may have been more, and it may have been a few less. The fact of the matter is that means there was a greater interest in it. That means there were new subjects. And it also means when you get that many amendments that a lot of people didn't feel we had done a complete job. That is an extraordinary number of amendments. Yes, we have made 65 uh, in, in order. But remember, with, that means we've still got well over 100 that we haven't really com completed uh, our deliberations on, and some we are not. And I've cut a point out that a great many of those came from the Democrat side of the aisle. You had 100 amendments after the committee process run by your chairman was through. If I could reclaim my time, this list that I read, this is everything that's in the crime bill. This is it. But I do not have a report behind every one of those titles that it I have seen that covers everything. Well, that is, if that has been accomplished now, in the last two weeks, then that will be something that members can address. It has been. But even Mr. Bielen said, said we only had 90 percent of it. No, uh, I sure don't have 100 percent of it. 100 percent. You say we have 100 percent at a committee report at this point. Uh, I'd like to see it. Mr. I, I do not have it. Mr. Bielson is, is, has been told that he was wrong, that it's 100 percent. It is 100 percent. And we understand that it's less than that. All right. I move the previous question, Mr. Chairman. No, well, hold it. Oh, sorry. I withdraw that. <laughs> Mr. Solomon. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, we, we probably had enough, uh, enough debate on this issue, but I just want to get the record straight. You know, in this bill that has no report right here, and there are thousands of pages of it. There are many provisions that differ from that list of reported bills that Mrs. Slaughter just read. There are many provisions that are different. I don't know what they are. And not one member of this body right here can tell me what those differences are. Now, uh, number two. Would the gentleman yield just a moment? I'll Mr. yield at that point, it, sure. I agree with you. We need to set the record straight. This, they're all in here. This is it. This is the crime well, bill. Well, they have this I, report. I am told by a Republican staff that that is not true. And I don't question the lady's integrity, naturally. But I am told by Republican staff it is not true that there are many provisions that are not in those reported bills that you just said. Are, now, the, are those provisions... Would they like to tell us what they are? Are those provisions... We don't know what they are. We're trying to find out. Are, are the provisions maybe, the the gentleman... Republican staff tell me what's missing? Because I, let me, let me I want yield to, to the know the if I'm mistaken. He deserves like... recognition. No, I, excuse me, sir. But really, I, I want to know. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm the, one, I'm the one who's gone on record, right. me, Louis okay. Slaughter, sitting down here at the end, that this is 100 percent report. And, and if, if we're missing something, I would very much appreciate knowing what it is. I was just going to ask the question whether the uh, report language that the gentleman is seeking may be on some of the bills that we didn't make in order. No. Mr. Chairman, let me, I, I don't know. That, that, you know, if we had a report well, and we had three days, now wait a minute, just a minute. If we had, under the rules of the House, if we had three days for our staff to go over the report uh -huh. to see what is in that report and to see how it might differ from that list 
that Mrs. Uh, Slaughter has over there, which I have never seen. Well, then, but let me just say one thing. You know, Mrs. Slaughter went to great uh, uh, went to a great extent to explain <laughs> okay. all of those uh, those previously reported bills. And I just want to call the attention of the members that when those bills, when those uh, reports were filed, it was two days after we were due to go to the floor with those bills. Now. Let me just finally just say, you know, because I, I really have to take a little exception about uh, my good friend, Mrs. Slaughter, who I have great respect for, but she referred to, and I wrote it down, to uh, many of these amendments not being made in order because they were redundant and non-germane. Mm -hmm. Now, I really take exception to that. Like my amendment, which would strike out the section that removes minimum sentences on violent drug abuses. Uh, I, I, just, I just really resent that. Uh, Mr. McCollum has an amendment. He's a member of the committee, which would have, which says, make serious violent assault felonies against victims either less than 18 years of old age or 64 years of uh, older, punishable by a minute maximum term of imprisonment, twice that authorized with regard to this section. Now, I don't think that is redundant, and it is certainly, uh, what was the other term you used? Germain. Non-germane. It is germane, according to the parliamentarian. Parliament. Mr. McCollum had another one, a terribly important amendment that ought to be debated on this floor, which is not made in order, to provide mandatory prison terms for use, for possession, and carrying of a firearm or destructive device during a serious violent felony or serious drug uh, tra trafficking I, offense. Mr., if now, I let me go one step time. further. I will in a minute. Well, M Mrs. Price, who is a new freshman member of this body from Ohio, uh -huh. a former judge. Uh -huh. Now, she has had experience where she has had repeat offenders come back to her, and they are these people that were imprisoned, and all they did while they were in prison was pump iron, and they built up their physiques, and they came back out, and they had to show everybody how strong they were. They didn't get one ounce of education, one ounce of religion, or anything else. And she has a simple amendment which would prohibit them from pumping iron while they are incarcerated and let them learn a trade and let them get a little education. And it's being denied. Those are the kind of redundant and non-germane amendments that we're referring to here that are not being allowed to allow. Dwight, I think that is misleading. Dwight, did well, the gentleman yield? I, control, oh, I yes. have the time. Would you yield so I can answer your question? I have the time. All right. No, I think okay. I No, I have the time. Then will the gentleman Mr. Chairman, you I, I, recognize I, I, me. I, I, I did recognize him. Will the him. gentleman yield? But I yield uh, no. to the gentlelady. We, Let me yield to the gentlelady first. The, the who's one, a friend of mine from New York. Absolutely. And but this, the one thing I think that's left unanswered here is if this is not the full report, what's missing? Could I get a copy of that? I, of course. Will the gentleman yield? Fine, but, we're going to go really, to the floor. Will the gentleman yield? I, you know, I'm, I'm serious about I that. Am, if, well, if there, I, will we, the gentleman yield? Yes, I'd be glad to oh, yield. I thank my friends from New York for yielding. And let me uh, simply say that we have asked staff about what's missing. And we've been told that if you will look at the bill, and you have a one-page item, which is a report, the bill happens to be uh, a 380 pages right, this long. This is only the index. Yeah. This is not, this is right, the, right. That's the index, and this right. is the bill, 380 pages yeah. long. Is that Some, index in that bill? Yeah, it's the very beginning. <laughs> the very beginning here. I'm surprised. Pages one and two. Subtitle F, the assistance for delinquent and at-risk youth, is an item in here which was before called the Community Youth Academy. Is that right? The, the Community Youth Academy. And there is real confusion as to how different this is from what was originally came out. Now, I'm told that, uh, that our colleague Craig Washington from Texas had some provisions in the bill which have been changed. And we don't know exactly what the impact of those is going to be. I can't tell you how different this is, but there are questions that surround these things. So the fact of the matter is, Louise, this uh, is different than what is in that index and what is in the report. You were fine. So, I mean, so my very simple uh, point that I want to make again is, if we're going through the committee process, mm -hmm. why don't we bind your index together and have that as a committee report which is expected. Then have the three-day layover procedure, which Mr. Solomon mentioned, the and then knows proceed with Dreyer, votes. The gentleman know. knows that the chairman of the committee is responsible for the committee report. 
The, well, if I could just. Well, I'm sure that Louise can have some influence on it. Oh, Mr. Brooks' response. Yeah, all right. Right. It, it, Why don't you it, all it ask not, Mr. Brooks it is where it is? It's not the rules committee's job to do that. Actually, However, why don't you me, work with Mr. Brooks and put it together? Let me say then. this to you. Uh, in, you know, the uh, uh, Washington provisions, for example, are in Title X, and uh, it's, it's right down here, HR 4033. It's, no, it's called Crime Prevention and Community Justice. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and it is different than the report. Is uh, it's different than the bill itself? It was changed, is what our staff is saying. Are you you are asking Republican staff to respond to this? And there are many questions that they have about this process, and that's why it seems to me that we should have had a report that came forward to this committee from Chairman Brooks and the judiciary. Well, I you may not like this format, and uh, yeah, because it's not told. it's not it's not however, what's required under the however, procedures of the House. All right. Can you uh, tell us what they are? Uh, gentlelady, who's Mr. got the Bates. time? I am Mr. The time. Solomon has a time, and he very generously uh, yielded to me. I yield back my time and move the question. Maybe move the previous question. Can I, uh, before you move the question? I withdraw my motion. Okay. <laughs> we have somebody checking now with the parliamentarian <laughs> in the darkened room uh, to, to answer some of these uh, questions. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, the gentlelady has been uh, very uh, up to date on uh, on what she said, and, but if there's any changes, we'll, we'll uh, find those out. Well, I think that those are their questions that we have raised, Mr. Chairman, and those have come to us from minority right. staff and on the Judiciary in the, Committee. In the process of uh, right. assembling the committee report, so that you won't have to. Yeah, we have would have liked to have had that before we got to this point. <laughs> well, the, we didn't know how what criteria you were going to establish. Well, we simply wanted a committee report. I don't know. I suppose that's uh, rather extreme. But Mr. Uh, Chairman, could I ask? It's been available Jim, for two weeks now. The committee report? Yeah. Hmm. It's been available. You mean that one page that Ms. Slaughter has? No. No. This is the index. Right. This is the index. That's, I just said that was a committee report. This is the index. No, she said it was the index. index. Right. Mr. Chairman. That's all we have is a committee report. Mr. Chairman, along that getting further information as you're making your inquiry to staff, we have some revisions uh, that have been announced in, in the sheets that your staff has kindly provided in the uh, on blocks. Uh, Mr. Moran, uh, Mr. Martinez, uh, Mr. Rangel, and maybe some others. Uh, could we have some illumination on what those are if your staff is providing those? I don't know what they're revised from or to. Uh, and given the fact of the way the time has moved, I, I'm sure it's simple enough to understand, but uh, we probably need to understand it on our side, and I'm sure your members do want to know, too. I'd be glad to yield to the gentleman, uh, since I still have the time. Move the previous question. How about giving the chairman back the time? Uh, <laughs> I, I yield back my time to my chair. Thank you. Mr. Gordon, I think you may have something to say about Martinez and company. Well, what I would like to say, Mr. Chairman, is I think most all of us have spent several days in our district over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I know that I've, I've met, well, I think, every sheriff and police chief in my district, as well as a number of constituents. I think they want us to get on with this crime bill, get on with action, uh, and quit trying to talk it to death. Uh, members have had an opportunity at the subcommittee level to introduce amendments. People, members have had the opportunity at the committee level to introduce amendments. We are now accepting 65 amendments now. Uh, let's get on with this bill and get action. And I move previous question. Gentleman from uh, North Car uh, Tennessee moves the previous question. Well, well, no, Mr. Chairman, I was asking for recognition, but uh, I will. I will certainly withdraw. I will withdraw. Right. Gentlemen, well, like <laughs> ask the previous question. Move the previous question. Well, I've observed the time that we've been discussing the open rule. Right. There's a lot of chatter when we get to the floor on this amendment, on this bill, on the rule, you're going to find that we're going to be real serious. And I don't think, in fairness to the lady from New York, that that is a committee report, and we all know it isn't, Louise. And therefore, I. I wonder about the gentleman from California, Mr. Beatles. Sure, what do you want? What do you, what do you mean? And I what do you mean have, you wonder about me? Uh, he and I have A lot fought, of people wonder about the gentleman from California, Mr. Quillo. He and I have fought religiously for open roof. Now, you've got to leave religion out of this. 
Uh, and I, I don't know. Uh, the stance today would lead me to believe there's there's been a shift in uh, in the gears, and we're headed in a, in a new direction in this. Listen, period. if I may say to my friend, if I if the gentleman will, will yield. Um, it's not fair to pick on me. Every now and then I, I am supportive of the gentleman's proposals for open rules and I don't want you to suggest that there's been a change in, in my point of view in those instances where I don't support the gentleman. Uh, you know, there, I've been supportive of the gentleman's proposals in areas where an open rule would in effect have meant an additional four or five or six or seven amendments which I thought was sensible to make an order. In this particular case I do think that this committee has made a thoughtful choice of allowing the 65 additional amendments and that it would be foolish and, and silly of us in, in every respect and we'd all come to regret it if we made an order 160, 170 uh, different amendments, many of which are not, to be frank about it, all that well thought out and might not be turned down on the floor because they sound good even though they may underlying, uh, the underlying a substance may be, may be foolish to take up the next four or five weeks on the floor. So I join the gentleman whenever I believe he's correct, uh, but you have to take this on an ad hoc basis. In this particular instance, I think we've done a very good and a very thoughtful job on this rule, and, and we'll vote for the, I shall vote for the rule and against the gentleman's proposal. Mr. Chairman, if, uh, if everyone is complete, I, are, is, are you through, Mr. Quillen? I don't want to. Okay, I don't want to. Uh, if everyone is, is complete, I think the last several minutes demonstrates why we need to get on with this uh, with this bill? I'm not sure that anything of substance, anything that has has beneficial or been benefit to the uh, crime enforcement in this country has been accomplished the last several minutes. Yeah. Let's get on with the bill. Let's get on with trying to do something for this country. And I move previous question. Uh, before you move the previous question, I'd like to present the reports to Mr. Solomon. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's been a motion on the previous question. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous questions? It's ordered. It's ordered. It's no, it's ordered. Question now comes on the Quillen Amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. Aye. No. Aye. no. Aye. no. Aye. Aye. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Bielens. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Saul? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Mr. Dry? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Six members have voted in the affirmative, four in the negative. Four in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from Tennessee is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to offer an amendment that would modify the King of the Hill procedure as uh, Tony outlined it when he uh, offered the rule under this habeas corpus provision. They would require that we first consider the Hyde Amendment and then the Derrick Amendment. And uh, that is not a coincidence. It's by design created so that the last amendment that carries, even though it may receive fewer votes than the amendment passed before, is the one that, uh, that moves ahead. So I uh, would like to offer an amendment which would strike the existing King of the Hill language where it appears and substitute language providing that, and this is very simple, that if more than one amendment is adopted, the amendment adopted receiving the most favorable votes should be considered as finally adopted and reported back to the House. That means that, that the uh, amendment would ha which has the most votes in the House would in fact, under the King of the Hill procedure, uh, be the one that passes rather than this convoluted structure which allows the last one to pass. I'm sure the gentleman realizes that we did knock off King of the Hill out of every other amendment except the habeas corpus. That's and that's why I'm just trying to help you complete that procedure by well, knocking no, it out of this one, too. But I just too. want to point out how much we acquiesce to the minority. Okay? Right, and let's, let's go all the way here. All right. This is not just for the minority. It's so that the majority of the House can, act, in fact, have its will worked here. Question comes in the motion of the gentleman in California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Mr. Chairman, we have a reported have vote on that. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Beals. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonnier. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. No. Ms. Long. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four on the negative. Four on the affirmative. Five on the negative. The motion of gentlemen from uh, California uh, not does not prevail. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I respectfully move that we make an order of Mr. Sensenbrunner's amendment. It's amendment number six. The 
provisions of the amendment are to strike subtitle one of title ten the local partnership act this is an eight billion dollar provision that gets into social management uh, as an element of crime fighting uh, at the expense uh, in my view and many others views of the law enforcement capability on the street and dealing directly with the issue of people who are abusing our citizenry out there uh, I realize it's a good effort uh, I think that it is not received enough debate in this and I do not think this is a situation where we are ready to move ahead at this level uh, and to throw this kind of money into what is called midnight basketball networks and other uh, descriptions it's received and I'll tell you mr. chairman that I, I make this motion uh, with a great deal of deliberation after two weeks of a lot of testing of this in the field I did not find a lot of understanding of it or a lot of support uh, and I uh, that being the case, I am rel relatively sure it will not work the way that those who, uh, with good intention, are trying to sponsor it will have it come out. Consequently, I move that we strike subtitle one of Title 10, as Mr. Sensenbrunner has amended, made. You heard the motion. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. Mr. Chairman, I respect that. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chair, Mr. Beelins. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond, Mr. Hall, no. Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, no. Mr. Solomon, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dry, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Six in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from California is not a, a flower is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would like to then move that we make an order Mr. McCollum's amendment number 170 which actually transfers half of the funding for f Title 10 uh, to Title 6 uh, and that is basically shifting from the uh, local partnership type of provision to the violent repeat offender incarceration. I think many people are asking us to provide uh, getting the criminals off the streets. I think taking the funds for that purpose uh, is the number one priority. I make that motion. Is there the motion, gentlemen from Florida? Any discussion? If Mr. Not, Chairman, oh, Mr. Billington. Forgive me, but I don't want people to misunderstand what's going on here. And um, not being a member of the Judiciary Committee, I can't give the gentleman a complete answer. But as the gentleman knows, uh, there's provision in this bill uh, for prisons for getting violent offenders off the street. There's an enormous amount in this bill for getting violent offenders off the street, uh, off the street, uh, and. Uh, and the gentleman's the, the amendment that the gentleman is, is seeking to to, um, to make an order would simply take away some additional money or put some additional money into that which otherwise was being used for crime prevention and uh, community justice. And everybody who's taken a look at this with any you know who knows anything about it knows that you've got to do more in terms of fighting crime than simply putting people in prisons, which we're which we're doing to a great extent in this bill. I mean, the gentleman's making it is offering to make a decision here that all of the money should be going into putting people in prison instead of getting at some of the root causes of crime in effect. I, I thank the gentleman for his observation and uh, I would only respond by saying it is not this gentleman that is only making that observation. It's Mr. McCollum who is the sponsor of the amendment and this uh, apparently did receive incomplete consideration Judiciary Committee which is the reason why I think that we should uh, in fact uh, elevate this up to a very important point of deliberation. I equate it to uh, if you can go back to a wartime situation, uh, di distributing funds to the USO instead of to the front line troops. And I think that the American people are asking us to get out there on the front lines. I think it's very, very important. Uh, and, and we will have a difference of opinion on that, perhaps. The we American are talking about shifting money to a higher priority here. All right. But it's eight billion bucks, Tony. Yeah, I understand. But the, American, a lot of the money. American people are not fools. They, they, they know, A, that we're putting a lot of money into putting 100,000 additional police officers down the street something which the federal government's never gotten involved in before. They know that we're putting a lot of additional money into regional prisons to help, the, to help the states who can't afford it to get people off the street. And they also know that's not the entire answer to the crime problem. Just, just more police and more prisons is part, of the, is part of the answer, something we've got to do, but you have to do more than that. And that's what the bill attempts to do in the gentleman's proposal that he's, that he's pushing here yeah. would take the money out of the other part of the bill, which also would serve useful purposes. I just want people to understand there's plenty in the bill right now, whether or not Mr. McCollum's amendment is made in order, about getting violent offenders off the street. I, I the gentleman yield. thrust of the whole bill. I respectfully disagree with that point. It's a debatable one. Yield to my friend from well, New York. Uh, I, I would remember. respectfully disagree with it also. You know, Mr. McCollum, 
is one of the most respected members of this House. He is considered a, a member who very rarely gets involved in partisan issues. Uh, in the absence of Ham Fish, our ranking Republican member who is, uh, who is retiring and uh, who is suffering with uh, a bout of illness, now a very serious illness, uh, Mr. McCollum has carried the ball on this bill. There probably is no one more knowledgeable on our side of the aisle than Mr. McCollum. And he will tell you that this issue is not covered in the bill. And for him to be denied his right to offer this amendment as the gentleman on the uh, Judiciary Committee who is in charge of carrying it for us, I think is just outrageous that it's being denied. And, I, and it should be accepted. As I understand, Mr. McCullum is the ranking member, uh, now I guess, uh, or ex officio ranking member, now that Mr. Fish is not, uh, is in the hospital and we wish him all well. And so he has been a primary uh, player in developing this bill from the start. He had the opportunity to, to um, introduce his bill, and he probably did at the subcommittee level and at the committee level. So he has been on the committee, he has been the, the substitute ranking member and has had the opportunity to be very actively involved on every occasion. I guess, you know, you can say uh, this is a, an opportunity to have a third bite at the apple, but certainly this is not uh, a situation where this man has been uh, closed out. But would the gentleman yield? Uh, the gentleman has just my made my point entirely. He is the ex officio ranking member. He is one of the most knowledgeable. He heads up our crime task force on our side of the aisle. And for him to be denied his right to offer this amendment, but he wasn't the gentleman denied. has just made my he, point. He wasn't You're denied. saying that because he, 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 was, he, he was denied in committee, he should not be allowed no. to have no. uh, us vote on it on no, the floor of this saying, House? That's saying, wrong. You're saying he was denied. That's not correct. He had the opportunity. He is being he denied by this rule. That's not correct. He had the what? He was not denied in that he had the opportunity to introduce it and probably did. Is at, he being denied his right level? to offer this on the floor of the House? For a third time. He, no, he, for the first time. For the third, you you mean he wasn't interested he is enough? Not, in, he he is wasn't being allowed for the first time to offer this on the floor. So board. you mean to say that even though he was a member of the committee, and staying in the ranking member now that uh, of the committee, um, that that he failed to introduce his amendment? He was not interested enough to introduce oh, no. his amendment. He introduced at the his amendment. Level. And it failed in committee. Okay, so he did have the As opportunity. As the ranking member, he has a right to have this idea considered on the floor. Mr. Chairman, may we claim. But, but, so but let's just let's make it clear. <laughs> you know. If I could, we'll make it clear. And the arrogance of this committee is shutting him out of his opportunity. He had the opportunity chairman, may I be uh, to introduce it at the subcommittee level and at the committee level. Uh, I know it's, uh, I know it is, uh, not always that we go to the merits of the amendment uh, in this committee. I will tell my friends on the other side um, that I had a series of town hall meetings in my district during the last two months, the last two weeks during the recess, and that every one of those meetings, people got up and said, because I passed out a summary of the bill, at least as it uh, was pending before us, and they looked at that summary and they said, Congressman, all this is fine and dandy, all these things, these tough provisions that you have in the bill, and we support all these tough provisions. But we want you to do something on the prevention side also. Particularly, we want you to address young people. We want to try and prevent young people from getting into the system at an early age. And I think the, uh, the balance that the committee has struck is a reasonable balance uh, in this piece of legislation. Mr. Chairman, as the because. maker of the motion, may I respond, reclaim my time and respond to two of the points that came up in the debate. First of all, Mr. Bielenson has pointed out uh, a lot about the value of the money that is there. I agree that money is a sign, but there is no money to pay for the whole bill, as we know. We've, we've got that basic problem. We talk of this $8 billion authorization as if it's actually there. It isn't there. So we've got a problem funding this thing. So every billion counts, uh, particularly when you don't have it. With, re other, with the, the point that Mr. Gordon made, uh, I, I think that there is a really very critical subtlety in, in the point that Mr. Gordon has made and Mr. Solomon is making back and forth. Mr. McCollum did have a way to being a member of the Judiciary Commission to talk about this, but he didn't really have a way to bring this amendment forward because this deals with two separate acts and two separate funding pots. So for him to make this amendment specifically to those two acts in the committee, I think was a technical impossibility. So this is a point of first impression. Now, I realize Mr. Gordon is speaking to the spirit of it, and Mr. Solomon is speaking to the tech technology of it, but the fact of the matter is, it's a legitimate amendment. There is not a member of this House 
that doesn't want to participate in the debate of how much goes to the point that Mr. Frost has so articulately made about stopping the incentive for crime and how much money should go uh, for the other aspects of the treatment and the discipline. Shall we put the fire out or shall we teach people not to commit arson? What is the breakdown between those two points? That's the issue. And that's a legitimate debate for a crime bill, for gosh sakes. That's why I make the motion. Move the question, Mr. Chairman. Question comes on the motion, gentleman California, from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Respectfully ask for a quarter for Mr. Call the roll. Mr. Chair, Mr. Beans. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Close. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Doss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have been voting the affirmative, uh, six in the negative, seven in the negative now. Uh, the motion uh, of the gentleman from Florida is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Gentleman from California. Um, I move that we uh, make an order, an amendment that uh, Mr. McCullum has also offered, and it bars exclusion in federal proceedings of evidence obtained in circumstances justifying an objectively reasonable belief that a search and seizure was in conformity with the Fourth Amendment. And uh, he testified in behalf of this amendment here, and it seems to me that uh, we should allow for its consideration. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from uh, California. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The record votes. The record call roll. Mr. Gillis, Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Biden, Mr. Hall, no. Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, no. Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Bullock, aye. Mr. Dreyer, aye. Mr. Goss. Mr. Chairman, no. On this matter, three members haven't voted in the affirmative. Seven negative. The motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, gentleman from uh, California. I move that we make an order, Mr. McCollum's amendment number 172, which amends Title III and makes serious violent assault felonies against victims either less than 18 years of age or 64 years or over 64 years of age or older punishable by a maximum term of imprisonment twice that authorized without regard to this section. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. 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 No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Bullock. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have voted in the affirmative. Seven negative. The motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. I respectfully uh, move that we make in order Mr. McCollum's amendment number 180. This amendment amends Title V, the mandatory life imprisonment for persons convicted of certain felonies to provide mandatory prison terms for use, possession, or carrying of a firearm or destructive device during a serious violent felony or serious drug trafficking offense for which the person may be prosecuted in a court of any state. I think it's self-explanatory. There's been discussion on this. This is a question of discipline in the sentencing. I move the question. Is this... Uh, Sorry. Withdraw that. Porter, is this uh, making uh, a penalty uh, uh, in the decision of a state court? Yes, it is, sir. It's making it a federal... It's, it's state, and that's a critical part. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. May, may I ask a question, Gordon. please? It's my understanding that when this um, uh, anti-crime bill is complete, that we'll be taking up shortly after that a um, uh, another bill that will deal with... Um, all the various amendments that concern with um, weapons where they're committed. With. Gentlemen's correct. So w could you tell me a little more about that? So, I mean, is this just a duplication of what we'd be doing later? Well, what we've done is that uh, we've agreed, uh, judiciary has agreed to have a special bill that only deals with assault weapons. And uh, 
and it will be probably here in a couple of weeks. And as a result of that, we have not dealt with any uh, amendments that deal with guns. So it would be repetitious to do that now when we have yeah, a, because a, an amendment coming. I have a bill coming up that will deal just with those matters later. They're working on it right now. Okay. Would the gentleman Thank you. yield? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, I understand that that, uh, that bill that's going to come before us deals yeah. only with assault weapons. This amendment would deal with all kinds of weapons as well as explosive devices and would not be even germane in, the, in that piece of legislation that's coming down. That's why Mr. McCollum wanted it in the first place in this bill. And I yield to the gentleman from Florida. Uh, uh, that is exactly my understanding. If, if we have assurances from leadership that, in fact, you would rather deal with that, this subject that way and would guarantee us the opportunity to get it on the floor for debate that way, uh, I think Mr. McCollum might be receptive. But I've never heard such assurances or offers made. And we have been told this is the right place to bring this up. And I would point out it is much broader uh, than the characterization that has been made. This uh, provides for mandatory prison terms in the state area and, and that's a, viol a very important part of it. It's possession or carrying of a firearm or destructive device during a serious violent felony or serious drug trafficking offense. Uh, the, uh, all right, I uh, listen more attentive to the other part. The, Mr. Solomon is correct. It's the bill that's coming out of judiciary is going to deal with assault weapons only. Right. So I, I think for that reason this is timely and I don't think we have uh, a reason to expect an assurance on a non-germane <laughs> item uh, in another bill, and, and I think this is the time is here and well, now. Why you expect them on every other bill? Well, <laughs> we asked for them occasionally. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from uh, Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. No. The no is going to happen. Mr. Chairman, I really <laughs> asked for a recorded <laughs> vote on that. I think my hearing is gone. Hmm. I, I don't want to seem. Uh, like I'm trying to press my opinion, but it reminds me of the story that there was a, a uh, chairman of the rules committee and somebody asked him for a copy of the rules and he sent them an autographed picture. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to get any. I, I've never had those problems, Mr. Right. Question comes on the motion. All of the favor say aye. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Nielsen. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Wheat? Mr. Gordon? No. Mr. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Mr. Dryer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Four members having voted in the affirmative, six in the negative, the motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Dryer? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I uh, move that we make an order amendment number 160. Uh, Tony indicated uh, earlier that all of the amendments dealing with the uh, question of, of uh, illegal uh, aliens and immigration had been included in the bill, but frankly, the amendment offered by uh, the gentleman from Texas, Lamar Smith, was not included. It calls for the establishment of a criminal alien tracking center to help identify, incarcerate, and deport criminal aliens it requires registration of aliens on criminal probation or parole. It increases funding for INS investigators, establishes expedited deportation procedures for certain criminal aliens. It expands the definition of aggravated felony to include trafficking and explosives, child pornography, spying, and other specified activities. It increases penalties for failure to depart or re-entering after final uh, order to depart provides wiretap authority for aligned smuggling investigations and uh, increases criminal penalties for passport and visa document fraud. And Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we simply uh, allow for this uh, very thoughtful amendment offered by Mr. Smith to be made in order. You've heard the gentleman from California. Any discussion, Mr. Hall? Mr. Chairman, I, I'm wondering if we can get an approval of uh, possibly offering many of these amendments all at once, get an explanation of them maybe have one vote because uh, I understand this could go on for about four or five hours. One of the things, I know that there are a number of Democrats and Republicans on this committee who are interested in particular amendments. I mean, I know that Tony has uh, indicated an interest in this issue of illegal immigration. He might be inclined to vote in support of this, making this amendment in order. I don't know. Would but I mean, the only way we can really find that out is if we go through the procedure and, and have a vote. I'm happy, happy to yield to my friend. Yeah, Tony, order. I don't know whether you were here earlier, but um, you know, uh, I have great respect for Richard Gephardt. I mean, he, uh, on our side of the aisle, uh, 
He is naturally a partisan Democrat, but uh, he is a man of his word. He's a lot like Tip O'Neill that I spoke of before. Richard Gephardt met with myself and several other members on, on our side of the aisle and several on your side of the aisle, including Mr. Bonnier. And he assured us that we would sit down over the recess and we would negotiate a fair rule. Now, Tony, when you look at this rule, it is basically the same rule we had before. There were no negotiations made. I canceled a trip to Korea uh, to stay here, to be available. No attempt was made. And when you wonder why we are offering all these amendments, it's out of sincere, sincerity and conscientiousness, but it's also because somebody has reneged on their word. And I resent it. And it isn't going to be just here in this committee, but it's going to be on the floor of this Congress for some time to come. We want comedy in this House, and we get a rule like this, which deliberately sticks it to members of both sides of the aisle. That's not fair, Tony. You're one of the fair members of this body, and you ought to understand it better than anybody else. Well, I, I appreciate your comment, Jerry. I, I, I did hear your opening statement, and uh, I was just thinking a way to move this along, because the Rules Committee normally doesn't get into this uh, this long-term uh, debating of substantive amendments because we are the Parliamentarian Committee. And I was wondering if we could bundle many of these amendments and if a member on either side wanted to take one and isolate it and say, this needs to be voted on separately, we, we would have the... Well, Tony, I think the, con the concern that we have is, is, as Jerry's indicated, I mean, we have moved forward with good faith attempts to negotiate this rule out. And you'll recall that this, we were very concerned on March 23rd when this package came forward. Eighty Republican amendments, about 17 of them made an order, and it seemed to be very unfair, and this is basically a perpetuation of exactly what we were concerned about in March. We don't enjoy sitting here for four or five hours, but frankly, we believe that the amendments that should have been made in order should be considered on the House floor, and we believe that those members who offered them in good faith should have the right to at least have their proposals uh, debated. And if the gentleman would yield, I hope this yield. isn't an act of futility. I realize that each one of these amendments being offered are being voted down on a party line vote, but uh, I would hope that there is going to be some consideration and that uh, some of these amendments are going to be approved. I mean, are we just going to sit here for four hours and offer these amendments and get no consideration whatsoever? I think that is arrogance. If we figure happens. if we have enough votes that you'll finally start voting with us. That's really our uh, hope here. I think if we didn't have the TV cameras here, we'd be done with this in about five minutes. Oh, no. uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I assure I you that so. wouldn't be true. Matter of fact, the TV cameras can leave now. But, with, if the gentleman yield on that point. You heard him. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> if the gentleman yield, we, we did sit through ten and a half hours of, of testimony, and some of us were here for just about all of it. Um, and and I, I feel a little bit hmm? let down that we have not done what we said you we thought was going to happen today. over the break, Tony, but very candidly, that people were encouraged to get together and talk about finding co-sponsors and, and dealing with it. Maybe that's a little naive, but that effort bore no fruit. We were presented with a list this morning. I mean, you can tell some of us have not got the same materials that you did, whether it's our fault or somebody else, it doesn't matter at this point. We just aren't quite as up to speed. I couldn't put these things together in the kind of block you wanted right now uh, without some time. It would take me a couple of hours to sit down and see which, one, which ones could block and which ones can't. I don't want to leave anybody out who went through that ten and a half hour process because while we sat here and listened, folks were on tenor hooks here trying to do their votes, our members, our colleagues, going through the process up here. I feel a little bad leaving them out. I agree. There's some of the amendments I don't think much of, but uh, I know I'll vote for them on the floor if they should get that far. On the other hand, there are some good amendments here that have not had a whole lot of uh, treatment so far. Thank you for yielding. Are we ready for the motion? Yes, sir. Uh, question comes from the motion of Mr. Dry of California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The the have Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chair. No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Vaughn? No. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Weed? Mr. Gordon? No. Mr. Sullivan? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Bloom? Aye. Mr. Dry? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Chairman?
Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Seven in the negative. The motion of the gentleman of California is not adopted. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Chairman, um, Congressman Schiff from uh, New Mexico is a uh, former prosecutor and uh, probably is one of the most knowledgeable members of this body, particularly on an amendment that he was being denied under this rule from offering. Schiff is included? Yeah. Where, where is it? So we take care of your knowledgeable members of the oh, committee. Okay. All right. Show, show me where it is, because I don't. I haven't seen it yet. Mm. It's in the major, major issues. issues list. Okay. In that case, let me uh, let me withdraw. Do you want to talk about his about his, his competence oh, a little while longer, so that I, I most show do. He's, how close we looked at that <laughs> amendment before we allowed it? He's going to be talking about uh, his uh, his competence on the floor on this entire bill. Right. And um, he is one of the most knowledgeable members. Let me at this time then withdraw that and offer the amendment by Mr. Gingrich, who is our uh, Republican whip. He is also uh, uh, our future Republican leader. And um, he had offered an amendment which uh, your leadership and ours are very familiar with. If the gentleman remembers, we spent considerable time debating uh, a federal employee buyout uh, bill uh, which I supported uh, on a bipartisan basis. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gingrich would uh, take those funds and create a violent crime reduction trust fund financed with reductions in federal employees, uh, similar to the single language, uh, which requires that 90 percent of the funds be used for prison construction grants to states that have enacted truth in sentencing laws. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I also have a letter here from you uh, to uh, the Honorable William Clay, who is Chairman of the Post Office and Civil Service Committee. And in your letter, you say, I am writing to express my concern over the provisions in the Senate passed version of H.R. 3345, the Federal Workforce Restructuring Act of 1993. Specifically, I am referring to Section 6 as added by the Senate which provides that the funds saved by the reduction in federal personnel will be used for the creation of a violent crime reduction trust fund. Uh, you go on to say that this is not the appropriate vehicle for the violent crime reduction trust fund. It is my understanding that the Judiciary Committee is currently considering the crime bill and floor consideration is expected in the near future. Furthermore, the Senate has already included this provision in its version of the crime bill there will be ample opportunity for the House to address this matter in this more appropriate forum. That letter is from you, Mr. Chairman, to the uh, Post Office and Civil Service Chairman. Well, here we now have the crime bill before us, and I, uh, on behalf of Mr. Gingrich and you, I'm offering this amendment to make this amendment in order because this is the appropriate vehicle, and out of respect for Mr. Gingrich's uh, uh, position in the Republican conference, uh, we should make this amendment bail, uh, uh, available for a vote on the floor of the House. Informed by Chairman Brooks that he is going to bring the trust fund out of the conference and it will be handled at that time. Mr. Chairman, I didn't quite understand. Uh, he, Mr. Brooks said he will bring the trust fund out of the conference and uh, 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 apply uh, some of the money for the people who have been ripped. It's in the Senate bill now. So it is a conferenceable. Well, the, the, the whole thing, and, uh, you know, uh, the Senate, uh, the, the Gingrich Amendment puts 90 percent of those funds, in other words, into the prisons. And, Louis, you know, in our state alone, we have a terrible, terrible problem with the overcrowding uh, situation. As a matter of fact, the courts 
uh, just upheld the uh, minimum sentencing laws, and you read it in your Rochester papers, uh, I believe, yesterday or true, Sunday. Truth and sentencing. Uh, no, no, the, the uh, minimum sentencing. Oh. And um, but because there is a difference between the Gingrich approach and the Senate approach, that's why we ought to have the debate in the House, so that uh, if uh, he is successful, then we can go to conference and iron out the differences. This way, we're not going to have that opportunity if you don't allow his amendment. But the language is in the Senate bills. No, no, it's different language. It's entirely different language. Okay. Mr. Without further debate, right. I would move the amendment. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, no. We respectfully ask for a call roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Beals. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Barnum. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Bullock. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members voted in the affirmative of five in the negative. The motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Order. Thank you. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we make in order the uh, so-called Fagan Amendment that was presented to us by Mr. Zimmer. It's number 42. This is the one that doubles the maximum imprisonment and fine for any offense if the adult offender over 18 years of old uses a child to commit the crime or to assist in avoiding apprehension. After previous conviction for this offense, the maximum imprisonment and the fine are tripled. We had testimony on this. It was clear. I understand what he's trying to do. Uh, whether you agree with it or not, it's the type of sentencing provision, the discipline and sentencing that a lot of people are interested in, particularly people who are concerned about um, the well-being of children and all the reports and the welfare of children and uh, the things that go wrong and the mischief that's uh, played upon them. Uh, I think this is a, a particular amendment that has a lot of attraction. Uh, in a number of areas, uh, and I think Mr. Zimmer offered it in good good faith, uh, and it seems to me to be an entirely appropriate part of this uh, bill, which is uh, so big now uh, that this would be only a small part of it, but I think it will be an important part of it. So I move the, move the question. You've heard the motion, gentlemen from uh, Florida. Any, any uh, discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The nose appear to have it. Respectfully ask for recorded votes. Mr. Clark will respectfully call the roll. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Beals. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bondo. No. Mr. Hall. 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 Mr.
considered on the House floor, and I'd like to move that we uh, happy to yield to my friend from New York. I would appreciate it if the gentleman would uh, would have number 25 voted on separately. Well, I'm more than happy to consider number 24 and 26, and then separately consider number 25. So, Mr. Chairman, at this point, I'd move that we consider amendments number 24 and 26. Any discussion? If not, on the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Those appear to have it. Mr. Record vote, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielensen, Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Aye. Mr. Grant. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, five in the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dryer. At this point, I would like to offer Mr. Burton's amendment number 25, which provides the death penalty for murders committed during a sexual assault. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 No Four members haven't voted in the affirmative five in the negative. The motion the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. Mr. Chairman, I respectfully move that we put in order the kennedy Guerin Amendment Number 82, which, according to my records, was not included in any of the provisions of the rule so far. This one requires states applying for grants under the Violent Repeat Offender Incarceration Act to include in their application to the AG assurances that they have established a system to prosecute juveniles who are 14 years or older and charged with violent crimes as adults requires the states to keep records of these crimes for use in future proceedings. It's straightforward. It certainly strikes a chord in Florida where I live and juvenile crime and uh, ways to deal with it better, uh, both the treatment aspect and the prevention aspect are very much in order these days. This is to that subject. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Any mm -hmm. discussion? If not on the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The Respectfully no's ask for a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Nielsen, Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bonner, no. Mr. Hall, no. Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, no. Mr. Slaughter, no. Mr. Sullivan, no. Mr. Quillen, no. Mr. Chairman, no. Mr. Chairman, no. Mr. Dreyer, no. Mr. Goss, no. Mr. Chairman, no. no. Four members have a vote in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion is not adopted. Thank you. Any other motions? Chairman, I offer Mr. Ketzel's amendment number nine restricts the sale and donation of excess firearms owned and held by federal agencies and codified GSA regulations restricting such transactions. You put the motion, gentlemen from Tennessee. On the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No, the no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Mr. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielensen, Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Willard. Aye. Mr. Dryers. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Six in the negative. The motion of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Uh, Speaker, or, yeah, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. No thanks. I couldn't afford. <laughs> I can't afford the pay cuts. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, on behalf of Mr. Klinger, who is ce celebrating his birthday today, uh, uh, he had an amendment which he came and testified before us, which would increase the penalties for assaulting children to include the elderly, that is, those over 65 years of age. I have a similar amendment to also, and uh, I really would appreciate it if you could make it in order, and I would uh, so move the uh, amendment. How old is Mr. Klinger? 65, say? I believe. I think it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> he feels threatened. Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. Recorded vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielensen, Mr. Frost. 
Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Wheat? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Aye. Mr. Gossett? Aye. Mr. Chairman? No. Board members have a voting affirmative five and the negative the motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman may I make a, make a point? Uh, you know, it seems to me that uh, those of us on this side of the aisle are, are here and uh, participating in the votes, but it seems to me there's a little hopscotch being played on, on your side of the aisle with members switching off from time to time. It would be nice if we could have all of our members here and let's get this work done and, uh, and have every member voting on it. I mean, it's uh, only going to take another two hours. <laughs> we have a quorum, and that's all that's necessary. Well, I know, but uh, I, I just mean, wanted I, to make the point. No, yeah. but I, I still think that well, if a quorum is necessary, that nothing else is. We don't have proxies, and uh, if realize, people have other things God. You're operating within the rules of the House, and all I appreciate right. it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, my colleague from San Diego, uh, Duke Cunningham, has offered an amendment which exempts current and former law enforcement officers from state laws that prohibit the carrying of concealed firearms. And uh, I'd like to move that we make the uh, Cunningham Amendment in order. Question comes from the most gentleman of California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No, the no's appear to have record it. vote, Mr. Clerk Chairman. Call the roll. Mr. Garrett, Mr. Bielinson, Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bonner, no. Mr. Hall, no. Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dreyer, aye. Mr. Goff, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Four members have not voted in the affirmative, six in the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Another of my California colleagues, Mr. Doolittle, has uh, offered an amendment which denies federal benefits, including Social Security and welfare payments, to individuals convicted of crimes of violence. And uh, I'd like to move that that amendment be considered on the floor. The gentlemen, yield. Happy to yield, my yeah. friend. I would just point out, uh, in today's paper is an article which uh, states that by the year 2036, that the Social Security Security Retirement Fund is going to run out of funds. Now that's that portion. That, that's that one trust fund. In the same article, there is a. Uh, uh, they they inform us that the um, uh, Social Security Disability section is going to run out uh, by the year 1995. That's next year. And they also inform us that the uh, Medicare trust fund is going to run out uh, seven years sooner than the uh, retirement system, uh, which would put it sometime in the year uh, 2005 or so. Um, I think that this is a very worthwhile amendment. People that are incarcerated by, for committing federal crimes should not be receiving any kind of Social Security benefits, and this is a very reasonable amendment. I want you to make it in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Chairman, basically this amendment would uh, help maintain the solvency of the Social Security system. Yes. Well, if you, there was a show on television last night where Nostradamus says the world may end in the year 2000. Mm. Uh, and it may. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a prediction. Well, we better hurry up. <laughs> Let's maintain the solvency of the Social Security system. Is, is it going to end because of bankruptcy in the year 2000? <laughs> I don't know what it's going to end for. <laughs> Let's hope not. Maybe it'll end when term limits come in. I don't know. <laughs> Question comes from the most in the general from uh, New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. We have a record vote, Mr. Chair. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Beelins. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Pullen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have a vote in the affirmative, five in the negative. Most of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. provides the punishment of life imprisonment after three violent felony convictions. It does not require that the convictions arise from separate episodes. So you mean to say if the three violent uh, convictions are come as a result of one crime, that uh, he'd be eligible for... Right. Life imprisonment. Right. Sounds, sounds reasonable to me. Any questions? Any we discussion? Have, we have a three strikes and you're out provision in this bill, and so the gentleman is uh, is trying to have an enhanced three strikes and you're out, I gather. 
That's what that's the uh, goal that Mr. Doodle has here, and I think that that idea should be considered. I think he floor. wants three strikes in the same inning. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Question comes from the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. So no. The no's appear to have it. Chairman, we have a record vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goff. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Five in the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, my uh, colleague from California, Mr. Dornan, offered amendment number 46, which <coughs> adds the requirement of a profit-seeking purpose to the definition of pattern of racketeering activity under the RICO Act. I didn't get that. It adds the requirement of a profit-seeking purpose to the definition of pattern of racketeering activity under the RICO Act. So does that mean if there's no profit gain I guess that uh, maybe now it's a nonprofit organization? I don't, uh, uh, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Did I have it? We have a record. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Beal. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Long. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. <coughs> Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative, five in the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Chairman, we're working our way through the alphabet here on the Republican side. We are now in the last uh, amendment offered in the D, alphabet D, which is called the Done Deal. Uh, this is a bipartisan amendment offered by Mrs. Uh, Dunn of Washington and Congressman Deal. Where is he? Georgia, I think. Uh, Georgia. Isn't he? Where is he? Georgia? Uh -huh. And um, it's, uh, it's an amendment which is very, very important to an awful lot of people. Uh, uh, situations like this are even now uh, uh, reaching into the, uh, the suburbs and out into the rural areas of America. Uh, this particular amendment offered by a congresswoman and a congressman, uh, both of opposite political parties, encourages states to establish registration and tracking procedures and community notification with respect to released sexually violent predators, predators, <laughs> including convicted stalkers. And Mr. Chairman, you know, we have a situation right now with a, with a young girl who was abducted and taken up into the Adirondack Mountains from your state. And uh, we now are unable to get this, uh, this uh, uh, rapist and murderer of a 12-year-old child uh, even to come over to the Adirondacks and, uh, and show us where he buried that child. And it's because he has pleaded guilty to another, uh, to another uh, offense from which he had been released from prison. It's a terribly sad situation. Uh, an amendment like this, if it became part of the law, could help to perhaps save at least one life and probably hundreds and hundreds over the course of the years. And um, again, this was offered in, uh, uh, with all sincerity by, from both parts of the aisle. And the amendment really should be made in order and let us have the vote. It would pass overwhelmingly. I doubt if there would be one vote against it if you allowed it on the floor. Please, please make it in order. Any discussion? If not, on the motion, gentlemen from New York. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. respectfully ask for a quick vote. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielson. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bond, no. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dryer, aye. Mr. Gaunt, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Mr. Mielinson, no.
On this matter, four members have been voted in the affirmative, four members in the negative. On a tie vote, the amendment fails. Mr. Chairman. Pardon. I respectfully ask that we make in motion uh, Mr. Franks of New Jersey amendment, which he testified to. It's number 86. It's the one that creates a new title called Penalties for Repeat Sex Offenders to increase penalties for repeat sex offenders. Make second offenses punishable by not less than five years and not more than three times the maximum sentence otherwise applicable. A third offense would be punishable by mandatory life imprisonment. This is a, uh, directs itself to an area of uh, penalty and um, sentencing that we've had an awful lot of discussion about uh, in the last uh, year or two, uh, which I think culminates a, a great frustration by a large segment of our population that is concerned that sex offenders somehow always seem to get away with things that they shouldn't. And part of the problem lies in the disciplinary part of the system. I think Mr. Franks has made a bona fide effort here to try and deal with that issue. It certainly deserves the deliberation of the House. You've heard the motion of the gentleman from uh, Florida. Any discussion? If not on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Mr. Chairman, on that, I respectfully ask. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. 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 Hall, Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Dry. 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 Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. On this matter, four members having voted in the affirmative, four members in the negative, on a tie vote, the motion uh, does not pass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I uh, then make a, in order, uh, make a motion, we make an order, Mr. Franks and Jersey's other amendment, number 87, which requires federal prisoners to obtain at least a general equivalency degree before being eligible for early release from prison. That means if you are going to be turned out on the streets to be a constructive part of our society, again, that you have the tools and you're equipped to do that. It seems like a reasonable amendment, uh, and it affects the early release program, obviously. The gentleman here. I'd be happy to yield the gentleman from Tennessee. The question is that today I think that the Pell Grant can be made to prisoners to improve their education before they're released. If so, I think it's a good amendment, and I think the government should likewise continue their Pell Grant program to prisoners. I thank the gentleman for his comments. That's an aspect of this I was not aware of. This is not the Pell Grant you're addressing. I'm, I am referring to Mr. Frank's amendment. Just the GED it for the high school? It's a GE if you're going to be going to be eligible for early release. Uh, we're not talking about who pays for it or how you get it. We're talking about the, the requirement to be considered for early release that you uh, obtain a GE. How you get it and who pays for it, subject of other material. Chairman? Yes. This is, if I may say so, this is exactly the kind of amendment we should allow. I mean. Every statistic that we have available shows that if a person's got a high school equivalency, you know, the chance of his or her committing another crime is something like 85% less than if they didn't. Yes, Instead, exactly. I mean, this goes to the pumping iron thing before, which I happen to approve of myself and would have preferred to have, have um, voted for. Uh, I mean, if, if somebody wants to get out of prison early, they've got to become educated. That's fine. I mean, that's exactly what we should be encouraging people to do. And I would urge my colleagues to vote for the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, while at, at first examination this amendment might appear laudatory, I think if you examine it more carefully, you find that there are already a whole range of factors that are taken into account before a person is given early release. It includes education. It includes uh, other kind of factors that might indicate whether a person was capable of holding a full-time job or not. Um, would, would include restitution, it would include the, a demonstration that a person had, if they had previously uh, been a drug user, could, could demonstrate proof that they were no longer using drugs. All those are important factors to be considered, and, and I don't think we should accept this one amendment in this particular manner uh, that might in some way um, affect a system that ought rightfully to take into account a, a full range of factors. Any other discussion? Any other discussion over here? This is a uh, 
a very uh, important amendment. I mean, I know it one hand, the people don't want to allow prisoners to develop their body, and this one here, they'll develop their mind. Uh, and uh, I know that the, we've got another amendment coming on the Pell Grant. And, uh, as I gather, this is only, Porter, as I gather, this is only one criteria that must be met. My understanding is that this does not affect any of the other criteria that Mr. Wheat has properly referred to. This r affects only this criteria, as I understand the amendment. Well, I think in view of that, I will uh, vote for your amendment. I, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I just think it, it is important because I know the rate of recidivism is so high if people it's don't. the motivation. Yeah. Get it. So a uh, question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. The ayes appear to have the motions adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. We could uh, continue in this uh, great spirit of bipartisanship. There's another amendment that uh, I think really is worthy of bipartisan support. And one of the most serious problems that we've been facing in the area of crime have been this uh, load of drive-by shootings that we've seen. And we have got legislation that's dealt with that. Uh, amendment number 140 simply clarifies a loophole in the drive-by murder provision by including defendants who immediately exit the vehicle and are nearby the vehicle so that they can be included. And apparently now uh, there can be a drive-by shooting. They come by with uh, their weapons. They immediately get out of the car. And for that reason, they're exempted from this. And this amendment would simply allow for consideration to clarify the loophole uh, I, I, on this. You mean to say they can't? accuse a person of a drive-by shooting if he's out of the car? Apparently, if he's immediately exit and is close to the vehicle, he cannot be charged with this. Isn't that called fresh pursuit? Hot pursuit or? Fresh pursuit. Fresh I pursuit. would think that. Uh... Well, apparently not. And, and w the way Mr. Geekus has offered this, it clarifies that loophole which is in there. Gentlemen, with yield, can't you be got for murder even if you if it's not drive-by, if you're just standing there and you shoot somebody, that's regular murder. You can be tried for yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, we don't know that, I mean, if it's maybe not murder, apparently this amendment would clarify that. Oh, all right. I, I guess it's it's a question of semantics. You, you, if you're standing outside of the car, uh, that they, uh, uh, it's not considered a drive-by shooting. Right. Is that it? Right. If he's, if, if he, well, but it may not be murder. I mean, it could be a shooting. I mean, it may, it may not have been killed. And we have this drive-by shooting provision, and if the person does immediately exit the car and they are uh, there and they're close to the vehicle, they are exempted. And all this does is clarify that uh, uh, loophole to try and uh, address it. I think well, that... I, I don't know how that works, but I know when I'm sure Mr. Goss in his trial of law is probably, probably knows, too, that many governments, uh, many prosecutors of convicted people of driving under the influence who were across the street uh, making a telephone call. They were in their car and I just... Well, apparently there is some confusion on this and Mr. Geekus is simply making an attempt to clarify uh, that loophole that's in here. I mean, I, I, listen, we're not expert on it here. It seems to me that he would not have come forward in an attempt to clarify it if there were um, uh, confusion on it, if there weren't confusion on it. <coughs> Oh, is this is getting into regular murder in state court. This is a broadening of federal violation. Oh, is that what this does, uh, Porter? Uh, I'm finding out, sir. This, this, this makes yes, the state it, it does. It does federalize it, and it does oh. close the loophole. That Which is, is basically accurate. what has happened. I mean, we, we have this federal drive-by shooting measure, and this is a loophole that was in there, and it seems to me that this is an attempt to simply clarify that. Except you're, you're making a federal offense out of it. Yes, but I mean, it isn't, the, the drive-by shooting provision is a federal offense, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so in, in light of that, this simply 
addresses the concern of someone who is violating federal law by engaging in these drive-by shootings and then immediately exiting their vehicle being nearby and trying to uh, exempt themselves from it. Apparently this is a pattern that they know of and they utilize this loophole and Mr. Geekus simply wants to uh, do what he can to close it. Uh, gentlemen, yield. Happy to yield, my friend. M my understanding on this is that we're already dealing with a federal law and it's a loophole in a federal right. law and in response to Mr. Frost's concern and observation, are we creating uh, a, a, an overarching of federal law here I don't believe we are, only in the sense that we are closing a loophole that exists in the federal law. And we did deal with this whole issue of drive-by shootings in a federal way, and this simply uh, gets right to the uh, to uh, the root of a problem that uh, has come up with the law itself. Yeah, I I think that the the penalty, uh, whether the fellow's in the car or out of the car, doesn't change that much. So, and I think you'd you're defining, you're changing the definition of a drive-by shooting by having the person out of the car rather than in the car no, when no. someone's shooting. If they've immediately exited the vehicle and are near the vehicle, that's the way this is outlined here. And so they've obviously engaged in the drive-by shooting and to try and avoid the federal law, they immediately exit the vehicle. And so Would you say it's a federal law even if it's... Uh, no, it's not. Apparently, they're getting out of oh, this by exiting yeah, but, the vehicle. But, you, but what you're doing is, by changing the definition, you're making it a federal crime because the fellow recently exited the, drive -by the vehicle. Shooting, the drive-by shooting is a federal crime. Right. And all we're trying to do is get at those who try and circumvent that by engaging in a drive-by shooting and then immediately jumping out of their car after they've done this. And what Mr. Geekus is doing is he's simply trying to clarify that. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would only uh, suggest that there are reasons to have committees of original jurisdiction, and this is probably a pretty good example, that uh, the Judiciary Committee is really the committee to deal with something like this. We don't even know what this thing means. We aren't certain whether it means uh, before the uh, offense is committed or after the offense is committed. And I would s be reluctant to see us uh, get into the, uh, the fine points of... Uh, federal criminal statutes in the Rules Committee without having any background in this. Well, we don't want to do it in the Rules Committee. In fact, I would prefer to avoid having done it in the Rules Committee if we'd simply made this amendment in order and allowed the full House to consider it. I we think, could have done it right I, I there. I think we have to assume that the Ju Judiciary Committee is reasonably competent in terms of defining criminal statutes. And Mr. I think Geekus this is not... Mr. is a very able I, member of the Judiciary Committee. And, and he was not forward. He was not successful. Yes, and he's committee. come forward with an attempt to have this considered on the floor. And I think it's important that we close this loophole. Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no is clear. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bunn, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Quillen, Mr. Dryer, Mr. Goss, Mr. Chairman. No. What is it? Three in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we make in order Mr. Goodling's amendments number 137 and number 83. Number 137 increases penalties for individuals possessing a firearm while committing a misdemeanor drug crime such as simple possession and makes it unlawful for anyone using a firearm during a misdemeanor drug crime to possess a firearm for five years after conviction. And Amendment number 83 strikes Title 10, Subtitle J, the Youth Employment and Skills Crime Prevention Program in its entirety as it's duplicative for programs for disadvantaged youth under Title 2C of the Job Training Partnership Act and the Youth Fair Chance Program established under Title 4, Part H of the Job Training Partnership Act. And I ask that both of those amendments be considered and blocked. We hear the motion. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 The no's have been happened. Sure, we have a record vote. Mark will call the roll. Mr. Garrett, Mr. Fields, no. Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bonner, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Cullen, Mr. Aye. Mr. Dryer, Aye. Mr. Goss, Aye. Mr. Chairman, No. Three members have voting affirmative for the negative. The motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Chairman, I'd like
Satisfactory behavior, time credit for prisoners at 36 days. Currently, the cap is 54 days each year. Number 154 prohibits payment of Social Security or veterans benefits to those combined by court order in connection with verdict or not guilty by reason of insanity or similar verdict. I move their adoption. You hear the motion, gentlemen from Tennessee. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Clerk will call the vote. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Beale, no. Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bond, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wee. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. Sullivan, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dry, aye. Mr. Doss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Four members having voted in the affirmative, four in the negative, uh, under a tie vote, the motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Goss. Thank you, sir. Uh, I move that we make an order of Mr. Klug's amendment, number 4-5. This particular amendment prohibits possession of a firearm at or near a daycare center or a community center. Again, I think this is pretty self-evident. It's an attempt to uh, control firearms, uh, uh, potential problems that we've seen uh, throughout our society in this country. Whether you agree with the amendment or not, it appears to me it's already been a subject of a great deal of debate. Uh, I happen to think that uh, there should be extra penalties for uh, misuse of firearms. And I think in these types of situations, if it's particularly egregious, uh, we, we think of uh, hopefully that uh, daycare centers are areas of refuge and education uh, and care and attention. And likewise, we feel that way about our community centers. Uh, what possible use a firearm could add to those purposes at those institutions? I haven't any idea. I think it could only be deleterious. So I would move that we make Mr. Klug's amendment in order. You heard the motion, gentlemen of Florida. Any uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. no. Uh, no. Respectfully no. ask for a court vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Garrett, Mr. Beelins, no. Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bonner, Mr. Hall, Mr. Lee, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dryer, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Four well, members have a vote in the affirmative, four in the negative. Uh, tie vote. The motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, our colleague from Arizona, Mr. Kyle, has uh, offered uh, an amendment which deals with uh, some of the most serious sex offense cases, and I'd like to move that we make his amendment number 71 in order, and I'd like to explain it briefly, if I might. It provides for pretrial detention in serious sex offense cases. It increases the penalties for repeat sex offenders, repeat child abusers, and for drug distribution to pregnant women. It increases the sentencing guidelines for sex offenses. It requires HIV testing for defend defendants in federal sex offense cases. It authorizes courts to enforce restitution orders by suspending federal benefits for offenders who refuse to comply with restitution obligations. It protects the victim's right to impartial jury by equalizing the number of preemptory challenges accorded the defense and the prosecution in felony cases. It allows for evidence of similar crimes in sex offense cases, and it provides for the right of victim to fair treatment in legal proceedings. Now, what he's done here is he's moved forward with an attempt to, to uh, deal in a Broadway with many of the uh, very serious sex crimes that we've been uh, seeing, and I think it's a very worthwhile amendment and should be made in order. 
Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielenstow, Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Bielenstow, Mr. Bond. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slavin? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Mr. Dry? Aye. Mr. Goss? Mr. Chairman? No. Mm -hmm. On this matter, of, uh, three members have been voted in affirmative for and the negative of the motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Solomon? Mr. Uh, David Levy, a new member from, uh, from New York, uh, from Long Island, as a matter of fact. Uh, has an amendment which would penalize those who transport firearms across state lines or, for that matter, international borders with the knowledge they would be used to kill or injure or to intimidate. He provides uh, a life in prison or even a death penalty if the weapon is actually used in a violent crime. Um, we have a particular problem in New York State, particularly in New York City, uh, whereby we have very, very tough Sullivan laws, gun laws, and uh, yet, uh, in neighboring states, they are not nearly as, uh, as tough. And consequently, uh, weapons are carried across the border every day into New York City and in New York State. Uh, I really would appreciate if you'd make his amendment in order, and uh, let's debate it on the floor. You heard the motion comes from New York. Any discussion? If not, on the, on the motion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. No, no, the nose appear to have it. The nose have it. Sound like the eyes had it to me. Record books. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielenso, Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bond, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, Mr. Pullen. No. I know his voice. I know his voice anywhere. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Ms. Slaughter. No. Three members having voted in the affirmative for and the negative, the motion, gentlemen, is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss. I would like to. Uh, move that we make in order gentlemen Mr. Monzulo's amendment number 88 which designates pl police and fire chaplains as public safety officers thereby making them eligible for federal death and injury benefits they uh, get involved in the same type of hazard and risk as their colleagues and uh, I think that the point has been made that they shouldn't be discriminated against seems to me to be a reasonable amendment worth discussing anyway so I move that we consider it Mr. Chairman Mr. Uh, this particular uh, program is uh, a very important program uh, that has been uh, gradually uh, expanded over, over a period of years. Um, I think this is a reasonable amendment. What does this do? It, it allows the police and uh, ch the chaplains <laughs> to... But Mr. Chairman, you have to understand here that uh, I am uh, making the amendment. I'm not the author of it. My understanding is it's exactly as I've described it. It that provides that police and fire chaplains who are public safety officers, it just allows the eligibility for them for federal death and injury benefits if they uh, suffer death or injury in the, uh, in the process of their duties. The same as any other policeman or fire person, police person or fire person. Did you say that these were uh, uh, special officers? That these were? Uh, I didn't say that. What I said is that th this would designate them as public safety officers, designate. and that would thereby make them eligible for federal death and injury benefits what kind in the discharge of their duties. What kind of? Uh, money are they paid in their positions? I mean, it's... I, uh, it's Mr. Chairman, I can't answer that. The, All uh, this does police, is creates the eligibility. Police and, uh, and firemen gentlemen. who are killed in the line of duty, uh, the families are eligible for $100,000 in federal death benefits. I don't know about the injury provisions, but in, in case of death of a policeman or a fireman killed in the line of oh, duty... I understand that. Yeah. But also, they have uh, 
state uh, uh, pensions too, and uh, state remuneration. And I was just wondering, you know, what salary they would be paid and uh, how this. Mr. Chairman, I, this just makes the designation to create eligibility. It does not go into those provisions. I think that that is left uh, into the system that exists, and I cannot tell you the consequences or the cost. I wish I could, and I would be very happy to ask Mr. Manzullo to provide that information. But as Mr. Frost said, this is a subject that uh, I have heard from, not from only from Mr. Manzullo, but from some of these folks in my district and in other districts, as I'm sure others of us have. And it appears to me that this is a, uh, a fair play request. Uh, okay. well, at least uh, I know that we'll be saving some money on the families where it comes to the Catholic priests anyway. We won't have to worry about sending the children to school, I guess. Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 No, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted. Any other uh, motions? This amendment on uh, the Congressional Medals is made in order. Medals of Honor. The amendment I understand. And I thank you all for making that in order. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, my colleague, a uh, gentleman from Florida, Mr. McCollum, number 169, uh, which we've talked about before, strikes half the funding authorized for Title X Crime Prevention and Community Justice. Since we did not transfer the money, which we don't have, but if we had the money, we were, had a motion to transfer, now we're simply to say, let's exit out, and then that's uh, uh, many billions of dollars, perhaps half, uh, that we don't have to raise for the crime bill. Uh, this is a question of whether it's a good expenditure or not. Uh, it's a different angle on this question. Uh, this does not add anything to crime fighting, but it lowers the total of the uh, whole crime bill by several billions of dollars and foregoes that particular uh, aspect of the crime bill, which I've previously referred to as the midnight basketball provision, and many people characterize it different ways. I don't mean to speak pejoratively that way because I do think there are important aspects to it, but I do think that they have not been worked out yet, and I, I'm afraid uh, when I described this, honestly, at a town meeting in Florida, uh, and this part of this provision, and maybe I wasn't very adept at prescribing it, uh, I really got laughter back and, and sort of incredulity from the audience saying, you mean we're going to send youngsters out into high crime areas to become part of the target zone uh, at midnight? Uh, we're going to spend federal dollars to do that. Are we going to build fences and send guards out with them? What does this really boil down to? And I, I must say, uh, I, I think this is a program that May, uh, may have a little bit better understanding in some areas of the country, but there are an awful lot of places that don't understand it at all and don't think it's a very good idea. I, I was talking about the Title X. Um, well, we voted, no, I think we voted on uh, another aspect that was very similar to it. That was a substitution. Uh, this is just a straight removal of the funds. And you say that you're removing funds that aren't there anyway, is that it? What exactly? That means four billion less we don't have to raise from someplace else. It's a nice trick. Yeah? Well, it's uh, actually uh, it means we have less deficit. Four billion's worth saving. Uh, the question is whether the program is worth that much money. That's the issue here, and, and should we debate it? Mm. That's that's really what this motion goes to. Anyway, I make that's the motion if I've explained it properly. Question comes in the motion, General from Florida. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 The no's appear to have it. Respectfully ask for a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Therefore, call order. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Beavenson, Mr. Frost, no. Mr. Bonnier, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, Mr. Dryer, aye. Mr. Doss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Three members have been voted in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion, the gentleman from Florida, is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McCall, my colleague from Florida, our, our um, lead hitter on the uh, Judiciary Committee, has another amendment, number 166. This one amends Title VI. It's uh, on the sheet here. It's the Violent Repeat Offender Incarceration uh, Title. It increases the funding authorization from $600 million to $1.4 
$1.85 billion for each of the fiscal years from 94 to 98. Basically, this is putting more money uh, into incarceration. Uh, and where are we going to get the money? Well, I'd hoped we were going to get it in the last bill, but the last motion. But since we didn't get it there, uh, we still uh, have the chore of going out and raise money uh, to support incarceration. I, I feel that we're very much in step with America. Uh, the message we're receiving is that we're supposed to be locking up criminals. And um, I don't have a problem making this amendment at all and uh, urge support for it. So you were going to transfer the money you don't have into this bill so you could pay for the, this program? Well, if, if uh, since, since we don't have any money for this whole program at all, since let's start with that, uh, every penny saved is a penny we don't have to raise or go further into debt for, uh, annual deficit for. Uh, yeah, so that we're spending the money we don't have. Uh, on then this that, in this case, I am saying that this would be a worthwhile expenditure and worthy of considering cuts in other areas of domestic spending, of discretionary spending, to fund this one. I wonder what Abbott and Costello could do with the situation. <laughs> well, I think that they could probably have some fun with it. We'd find out who's on first. Question comes from the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's have been added. I respectfully ask for me. Yes, I did. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Beal. So, Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members having voted in the affirmative form on the negative motion, General Florida is not adopted. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Solomon, New York. Mr. Chairman, I might point out to my good friend uh, Porter Goss that if we had made the Gingrich Amendment in order and it had become it, and would uh, pass and become law, we would have had the money available to do that. Ninety percent of those funds would have gone, you know, into that fund. I keep hoping we're going to find some as well. Well, it's in the Senate bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a bet! It's not there in conference. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a delightful member of our body. Uh, a Republican from Staten Island, uh, New York, named Susan Molinari, Congresswoman Susan Molinari. And she has been a, uh, a real driver uh, behind these two issues. Uh, I would uh, offer both of her amendments in block, but I would ask that they be considered separately for a vote. Uh, numbers 91 and 92. The first of her amendments provides for the death uh, and disability benefits and this goes uh, similar, Marty, I might point out to the, uh, to the chaplain uh, amendment early on. Uh, provides for death and disability benefits for retired public safety officers who die or are permanently injured and totally disabled as a result of injuries while responding to a, a fire, a rescue, or a police emergency. And of course, uh, uh, again, in Staten Island and in New York City and even in some of the larger metropolitan areas, you have a lot of retired police officers and, uh, and uh, firemen who uh, retire and they continue to live in the same community. And of course, uh, you know, they're like the old, uh, the old fire horse. Uh, you know, when they hear the bell ring, uh, you know, they, they volunteer and they come out and they help out and they save innumerable lives. And yet when they are injured, they are not qualified to receive any disability benefits or death benefits. And uh, this would simply, uh, uh, reward the uh, those people or the uh, their families uh, for death or disability benefits. I would hope that we could make that amendment in order. The other of the Molinari amendments changes federal rules of evidence by providing for the admissibility of evidence on of similar crimes in sexual assault cases and in child uh, molestation cases. Susan Molinari has been uh, pushing this kind of legislation for many years now. Uh, and it really needs to be clarified, and I would hope that you could make her amendment in order. And at the appropriate time, I would uh, move her first amendment on the uh, uh, retired public safety officers, Mr. Chairman. Okay. On, on the public safety officers, uh, question comes, well, before we do that, uh, you know there's been an age limit on police and fire they have, when they have to retire. Yes. And they do this because uh, they physically can't really handle a job anymore. And what you'd be doing here is paying people who have been retired, uh, 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 
from the job and uh, if they hurt going to a fire. But I, I would think you'd be setting a bad precedent. I mean, you could have a fellow 70 years old hobbling out of his door and get hit by a hose and die, and he, he gets this kind of money. I mean, I, I, award, I, I, I think that uh, many of these people are very public-spirited citizens, but I, I just think that you're just going just a little too far and and giving them a pension after they're mm -hmm. retired because they get killed in the line of duty in which they're not employed. Mm -hmm. well, Mr. Chairman, I, you know, you make uh, some cogent arguments. Uh, the truth of the matter is, though, that, uh, you know, they're not uh, expected to receive large awards. These awards for disability benefits and even death benefits are in the uh, small thousands of dollars. You're not talking a million dollars. You're not talking about no, $500,000. You're talking about minimum Yeah, but we have a federal statute that people killed in the line of duty get $100,000. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. This deals with, uh, with uh, in other words, death and disability benefits similar to those municipalities like New York City or yeah. like... Um, but even uh, in New York City, if a person gets killed in the job, he still gets $100,000 from the federal government. Well, then he should. I mean, what's wrong with that? I well, mean, then so will this fellow. Yeah, but, it, but it, you're talking about the possibility of maybe maybe 10 or 15 or 20 and then over the whole nation of this happening to. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly with uh, municipalities like New York City, which are really up against it today, uh, and they are having to lay off firemen and policemen and public safety officers by the thousands, uh, this little $100,000 exposure is peanuts compared to what they uh, what they're saving now so I th I you know I, I understand your reasoning and it um, and uh, you make a lot of sense no but so does mine <laughs> I put one of the hot first hot bills through in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and and, and, and it, they show that the you know the mr. chairman could I ask a question mr. absolutely sure. as I read this and this this explanation may not be totally correct but it's this is for people who are retired right? yes well if they are retired why would they be uh, receiving uh, injuries responding to fire rescue or police emergency because it well because it could bear, bear not to go or what I mean. no what no happened? because they they're needed go off and they'd go out and help somebody and if they get killed they'd get but hundred thousand but they are retired right yes well you wouldn't send retired people out to respond no. am I right no but they volunteer but what if go they go out by themselves without being sent and they get killed Oh. <laughs> Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. 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 Recorded vote. Let the call roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Pianzo, Mr. Frost, Mr. Yeah. Bond, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen, Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members have voted in the affirmative for and the negative of the motion of the gentleman from New York is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, I had made a motion uh, to consider both the sub Molinary amendments. I would now move for a vote on the second Molinary amendment. Question comes on the second Molinary amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the no's have it. Record is vote. Kirk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Beals, no. Mr. Cross, no. Mr. Bonnie, Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Three members have voted the affirmative for the negative motion is not adopted. Mr. Dryer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we make an order Mr. Oxley's amendment, which requires criminals convicted of federal crimes to make restitution to their victims. Any discussion? Do we have any information uh, from the committee as to the uh, to the effect of this, or whether the, the uh, Judiciary Committee is looking at this? Do we know? Uh, I don't have uh, information of that effect. I remember that Mr. Oxley uh, testified before our Rules Committee on this. Uh, are you sure that the restitution matter, as far as victims are concerned, isn't in present law? I'm not sure. Do you talk about this? Hmm? No, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, this is uh, 
the amendment that Mr. Oxley submitted, and I simply think we should allow it for consideration yeah. on the floor. Well, again, it's something I'm sure the judiciary is well aware of, and we're not, so I... I've been informed that in current law, judges are uh, allowed to look at the possibility of uh, giving restitution to victims. Well, and under Mr. Oxley's amendment, which he's proposing, he requires... He's mandating the judges. Right. He requires that convicted uh, criminals convicted of federal crimes make restitution to their victims. To the motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No, the no's will be to have it. The no's will have it. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Garrett, Mr. Diaz, no. Mr. Frost, yeah. Mr. Bonnie, Mr. Hall, yes, Mr. Weeks, Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, yep. Mr. Solomon, Aye. Mr. Quillen, Aye. Mr. Dry, Aye. Mr. Goss, Aye. Mr. Chairman, No. Four members having voted in the affirmative. Four members having voted in the negative. On a tie vote, the uh, the, the uh, no's prevail. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, I move that we make an order Mr. Packard's amendment, uh, number 29, which gives federal law enforcement officials access to legalization immigration files for the purpose of a criminal investigation. Defer the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The we no's will record vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Bielsen. Mr. Frost. Yeah. Mr. Barney. Mr. Hall, Mr. Weed, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quill, aye. Mr. Dry, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Four members haven't voted in the affirmative. Four members having voted in the negative on a tie vote. <coughs> the motion is not adopted. 4-4. Four, four. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of Congresswoman Price from Ohio, a former judge, uh, I would like to move her amendment. Her amendment requires Federal Bureau of Prisons to prevent prisoners from strength training or improving their fighting ability and to remove all equipment designed for those purposes. And Mr. Chairman, you've heard uh, uh, testimony after testimony from people that have talked about the lack of uh, of these prisoners from getting uh, the proper education. We just voted on one requiring uh, them uh, to pass a uh, equivalency exam, and you supported it. Uh, this will do more to take away the, uh, the situation that exists now that Mrs. Uh, Price testified before us, where she saw time after time after a a time uh, offenders uh, coming back before her who have come out with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, bodies that uh, they want to show off and the committed crimes just to do it. Uh, I really believe that this is a worthwhile amendment. It ought to be voted on, and I would move the amendment. But wouldn't you uh, be actually limiting a person's ability to get work uh, as a result of... Uh, Absolutely not, Mr. State. Chairman. We're talking about bodybuilding. We're not talking... They can run, uh, they can exercise, they can do anything to build their body, but not to build uh, the kind of muscles that they use uh, and uh, to attack other people with. Uh, again, everybody understands the amendment. Uh, it does nothing to prevent them from recreational, with basketball, with uh, any kind of exercises other than this bodybuilding equipment. I move the amendment. Okay. All right. The uh, gentleman from New York uh, amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The gentleman's amendment is adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes. I have another amendment by. Uh, Another uh, new member of this body, uh, Mr. Jack Quinn of Buffalo, New York, he has an amendment that requires a federal permit for all purchases of explosives and requires a photograph and a set of fingerprints to accompany the application. Of course, this deals with a serious problem that they had up in Buffalo the other day. It uh, also deals with problems that we've had down in New York City. Uh, the amendment makes a great deal of sense, and uh, he should be allowed to offer that amendment on the floor of the House and I would so move the amendment. Hmm? 
Uh, question comes on the motion of Mr. Solomon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is another chair is in her. There's another amendment. Mr. Slaughter's amendment does exactly the same thing that this made in order. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll go with that. Okay? Is it an identical amendment? Yeah. Yeah. It's not identical. Which is not identical? We're told that the amendment is not identical. What is the difference? Well, they're both from uh, Western New York. Why don't we make them both in order and let them uh, flip a coin or whatever they want to do? She's your pal. Yeah, but he's Irish and Joe's prison. Who's Irish? Quinn. Oh. <laughs> I think the, uh, I've been informed that the, it may not be identical, but the issue was addressed in, in the slaughter amendment, so we'll just... Uh, uh, well, go us, with that. Give us a vote then, Mr. I give you a last vote. I would draw the request for a vote then. Okay. I don't know if you gave us the last vote. Oh, you want to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> you, better, you better shut up while you're ahead here. Let's go. Let's go. I withdrew the vote, Mr. All right. The gentleman from the ARC has withdrawn the vote, so I'll. Uh, all uh, motions uh, are nullified. Mr. Chairman? Yes. All right, I guess we have to put the question to dispose of the amendment. Question comes on the amendment of the gentleman from the ARC. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's have it. The, the uh, amendment is not adopted. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'd like to move that we uh, incorporate. Uh, five amendments that were proposed by Mr. Schiff. Uh, you mentioned at the outset that we included one of his amendments, but he has these five. I'd like to consider them in block and with the model that Mr. Solomon has said, ask for separate votes on, on all of them because I think they are worthwhile. Uh, the first one, number 141, extends U.S. jurisdiction to crimes committed overseas by civilian employees of the military or their the dependents. Gentleman Neal, there's, there's really no sense in uh, doing it on block if you're going to ask for separate votes. Yeah. Okay, then in other words, you'd like me to go through, explain each amendment, then have a vote, and then go through and explain the next amendment, and then have a vote. I thought it might save a little time if I explained them all at once, and then we could vote. Oh, okay. Add seriatim on them. Um, uh, it, it, and that, that's the point I'm making. It extends your restriction to crimes committed overseas by civilian employees of the military or their dependents if those acts would have been federal crimes if committed in the United States. The Second Amendment adds the commission of robbery as qualifying for one of the first two strikes under the three-strike provisions. The third one adds battery, and I quote, battery while armed with a deadly weapon or resulting in serious bodily injury to the list of specified violent felonies under the bill. The fourth changes the mandatory life imprisonment for persons convicted of certain felonies from three strikes to two strikes. And the fifth one adds to the three strikes provision mandatory life for the conviction of two serial violent felonies. And I'd like to ask that we vote on each of those, Mr. Chairman. Ooh, Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Um, question comes first on the, um, on the sh number 141. Number 141 from Mr. Schiff. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. no. We have a record vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk to call the roll. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Longer. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Dryan. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Bookley. Um, or having voted in the affirmative for the negative of the motion is not carried. Next sure. uh, question comes on Mr. Schiff's number 142. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. Those appear to have it. Those have Recorded it. Recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Barton. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Bunker. Four members have been voted the affirmative for the negative vote. I'm not carried. Next. Uh, Question comes on the uh, on Mr. Schiff's number 143. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. As opposed, no. Those appear to have it. The noes have it. Recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielinson. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Hall. Mr.
Mr. Derrick? Mr. Bims? No. Mr. Cross? No. Mr. Bonner? Mr. Hall? Mr. Lee? No. Mr. Gordon? Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Saul? Aye. Mr. Cullen? Aye. Mr. Dryer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Mulcair? Board members having voted the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion is not carried. Uh, question now comes on amendment number 144 by Mr. Schiff. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. No. No spirit of habit. Recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick? Mr. Bielus? No. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Bonner? No. Mr. Hall? No. Mr. Lee? No. Mr. Gordon? No. Ms. Slaughter? No. Mr. Saul? Aye. Mr. Quillen? Aye. Mr. Dryer? Aye. Mr. Goss? Aye. Mr. Mulder? Board members have a vote the affirmative for the negative. The motion is not carried. The question now comes on amendment number 146 by Mr. Schiff. Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Those appear to have it. The court will, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielus. No. Mr. Frost. No. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Saul. No. Mr. Quillen. No. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. Mulder. Four members have been voted the affirmative for the negative. Is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goss, gentlemen from Florida. Uh, a point of order question. On number 72, Mr. Smith of New Jersey's amendment, according to my records, has been made eligible for the en bloc amendments. Is that correct? Is that, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, is that that um, means that he has the right to uh, pull that out and debate it for 10 minutes. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. Uh, in that case, Mr. Chairman, I will not uh, ask for a separate vote on that at this, need to. at this time because of that provision, and I appreciate that guidance. Unless you want to withdraw it from that, from that situation. I don't think I wish to do that at this time because it appears to me that Mr. Smith's options are maximized uh, in the present position, for which we are thankful. With regard to the Mr. Smith from Michigan as opposed to the Mr. Smith from New Jersey, That's number 95. Yes. You will recall, as I will, uh, some of the testimony that uh, about altering requirements for federal grants to correctional facilities for diversional programs. As I recall, the testimony toughened these up. Uh, but I'll tell you, honestly, I do not remember all the details of the provisions, but I would like to uh, make the motion in order that we um, make an order, Mr. Smith, from Mr. Good, number 95 amendment uh, for that purpose uh, and look forward to hearing him explain all the details of it on the floor. Any questions or debate on the motion before the committee? If not, uh, those in favor of making Mr. Smith's uh, amendment order to the public saying aye. Aye. As opposed, aye. no. No. Noes appear to have it. Respect that, sir. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Beals. No. Mr. Cross. No. Mr. Hall. No. Mr. Weed. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Goldberg. Four members have voted the affirmative for the negative. The motion is not, not agreed to. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I confirm that Mr. Smith of Michigan, number 96, was in fact included in the en bloc amendments? Yes, it has been. Thank you, Mr. You're welcome. Okay, now we come to the big guy, Mr. Solomon. <coughs> well, Mr. Uh, Want to do him en bloc? I'm kidding. Mr. Chairman, uh, on behalf of uh, Congressman Jimmy Hayes and myself, and um, I had previously asked that a, uh, a letter from he and I to Chairman Joe Moakley be made uh, a part of the record, and we were granted unanimous consent. But uh, let me bother to just take the time of the committee for just a minute to read you this letter, uh, because there are an awful lot of members of both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans, that. Uh, feel very strongly about this issue, which is why Congressman Jimmy Hayes of Louisiana has been taking the lead on his side of the aisle on it. The letter says, we write today to urge you to make an order and amendment to this bill uh, regarding maintaining current mandatory minimum standards for the most serious crack cocaine drug offenders. As you may be aware, this bill before you would drastically alter the way in which drug users and sellers are prosecuted and sentenced. It further would eliminate much of the progress which has been made in reducing illicit drug trading. I can't hear over here, guys. Uh, in reducing illicit drug trading and offering treatments for those hooked on crack. The Controlled Substance Act of 1988 was our first credible effort at providing sentences to deter 
drug offenses, which are the primary cause of violent crime in this country. Although proponents of changing this approach make a case that decreasing mandatory minimums will reduce taxpayer cost, what will the eventual cost to society be should one of these early releases commit a more egregious crime? We do not believe that law-abiding citizens should have to stake their lives or their livelihoods on potential criminal rehabilitation. Our amendment is simple. Instead of reducing the mandatory minimum sentences for possession of the uh, addictive crack, cocaine to two years, as proposed in this bill, our amendment would strike Title II language and restore the five-year sentences to what it is today. In light of the fear in neighborhoods throughout this country over the preponderance of drug trafficking, we believe that at the very least, we in the Congress should give the issue of diminishing such mandatory minimums due consideration and deliberate it on the House floor. At the same time, we are proposing guidelines for three strikes in your out. We are suggesting the elimination of sentences for the most prevalent of repeat offenders. The people of this country deserve no, to know whether their representatives favor making the streets safe again. We appreciate your support. May I just interrupt for a quick minute, Chair? Yes, I'd be glad. I, I take it, at least at the moment, you're speaking to your amendment number 51. That is correct. Okay, sir. Because right. you also had a couple of others here right. that you may want to come back to. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the truth of the matter is that if the, the minimum sentence uh, is reduced, as uh, is in this bill, uh, it's probably going to affect fewer than 100 people each year. That means you're going to be putting back out on the streets fewer than 100. But those, the, the, the example that it would set would severely set back what we are trying to do, and that is to prevent what is happening today. And that is the recent study that came out which showed that marijuana and cocaine use is vastly uh, increasing in our schools. And it is vastly increasing for the first time in two years. For the last seven years, we've been able to reduce that figure by as much as 80%. Now it's turning around uh, and is becoming very, very serious again. Mr. Chairman, we really deserve to debate this issue on the floor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Schumer uh, has his um, um, amendment uh, in the bill, which would reduce the sentencing. Uh, we would like the ability to be able to strike that and put it back in under existing law. And I would hope that you would consider our amendment. Thank you. Are there questions or comments or debate on the gentleman's motion? If not, the question comes on, on amendment number 51 by our friend from New York, Mr. Solomon. Those in favor of including it uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed, no. 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 Recorded Those vote. Those appear to have it. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Bielsa. No. Mr. Cross. No. Mr. Bond. Mr. Paul. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Uh, aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Roman. The ayes, uh, four members of the board in the affirmative, four in the negative. The uh, motion is not carried. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the, um, all of the other amendments that I have except for uh, one uh, are partially covered in other amendments that have either been uh, included in the bill or voted down uh, previously. I would just uh, offer amendment number 50, yes, which is a very, very simply expresses the sense of Congress. It is not law. It is not binding on the Congress. It is not binding on the President. But it simply expresses the sense of Congress that no federal department or agency should study or finance research involving the legalization of drugs. And Mr. Chairman, again, uh, we all know what's happening to drug use in America and how it's affecting our children. Uh, we know that uh, Dr. Jacqueline Elders has uh, talked about legalizing drugs in this country. Uh, if any of you have traveled around this world as I have and you've seen the terrible, terrible situation uh, in the parks in Netherlands and other parts of the world where uh, these poor, poor kids are uh, just lying out there taking needles in the arm and their, their lives are totally destroyed. The least we can do is to, uh, to pass a, a sense of Congress amendment which would, uh, uh, would say we do not intend to legalize con drugs in this Congress. I would hope that you would make this, uh, this amendment in order so that we can uh, at least have the debate on the floor of Congress. 
Any questions or debate on the gentleman's motion? Uh, if not, we're speaking of Mr. Solomon's amendment number 50. Those in favor of making an order signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed signify by saying no. No, no. Those appear to have it. <laughs> Clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielan. No. Mr. Frost. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Mobley. Four members having voted in the affirmative, four in the negative, the motion was not carried. Sir, Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I'd like to move that we make an order. Uh, Mr. Stern's amendment, uh, number 75. Uh, I'm happy to go through and explain it. Creates a new title, carrying of concealed weapons, to allow, notwithstanding any provision of the state law, the carrying of a concealed weapon. If the individual is 21 years of age, has no felony convictions or history of mental illness, and has completed successfully a handgun safety course offered by the state. Okay, you've heard the motion. Any debate? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. no. No's appear to have. Record vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk, please call the roll on number 75. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielans. No. Mr. Frost. Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Wee. No. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Dry. Aye. Mr. Goss. Mr. Hogan. Eight, uh, four members having voted the affirmative, four in the negative, the motion is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I move that we make an order Mr. Stern's amendment number 122, which is expresses a sense of the Congress that the Constitution provides all citizens with the right to keep and bear arms. You've heard the gentleman's motion. Is there a comment or debate? If not, those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Those appear to have it. Clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielens, no. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bonnier, no. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, Aye. Mr. Quillen, Aye. Mr. Dreyer, Aye. Mr. Goss, Aye. Mr. Murphy. Four members having voted the affirmative four and the negative, the motion is not carried. Chairman, I have an amendment number 84. Mr. Quillen. Mr. allows and grants the state under section D of section. 2001 to be used for programs and projects and other activities to provide for overtime costs, training, purchase, and maintenance of vehicles and equipment, technology, and civilian enforcement. You've heard the gentleman's votes. Any questions, comments, or debate? If not, those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Those who appear to have it, the court of order is requested the clerk will call the roll. And this is Mr. Conovich's number 84. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielan. No. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Quillen. Aye. Mr. Bryan. Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Roper. Four members having voted in the affirmative for and the negative, the motion is not agreed to. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Goss. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move that we make an order, Mr. Weldon, number 113, which provides for state and local authorities $30 million in matching funds from the Crime Prevention Trust Fund for gun buyback programs. These programs have had mixed success. Some think they work well, some don't. It's a controversial area. This provision in the amendment allows the debate to come forward on that and determine whether or not $30 million should be provided in matching funds for state and local authorities to participate uh, in these buyback programs. It's about 14 cents a gun for the 200 million that we have out there. It's not a I'm, big, I'm it's, no. it's not a big deal. But uh, no, there, it, it, in communities a, that thinks it works, it, it seems to me that this is an area where they've got success. I tell my friend I was kidding. I, I accept the Thank joke. <laughs> okay, any questions or comments on, on the gentleman's motion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Those appear to Respectfully have ask for it. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Beals, no. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bonner, no. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat, no. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dry, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Hope. Four members having voted in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion does not carry. What was the other chief? Mr. Jerry? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I move that we make an order the uh, amendment offered by uh, our colleague from Virginia, Mr. Wolf, which provides for pilot programs conducted by the federal prison industries uh, to test the feasibility of teaming private U.S. firms 
with the federal, federal prison industries to produce goods currently made offshore to uh, meet the need for increased employment of federal prisoners. May, may, may the chair tell the gentleman that, that some members over here were attracted to this um, amendment as well. We've spoken with the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. I know this isn't, uh, you know, doesn't satisfy everybody entirely, including the gentleman who's now speaking, but they have agreed to hold hearings on this particular matter in the near future, which uh, I'm, I'm pleased about, frankly, because, frankly, I think it's something that well, would be done in one form or another. And I'm pleased about that, too, but I think that since Mr. Wolf has come forward, we should move to make his amendment to order. And uh, those in favor of the gentleman's motion will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. We have a record vote, Mr. Chairman. Yes. The um, clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Garrett? Mr. Bielens? No. Mr. Frost? Mr. Bonnier? No. Mr. Hall? Mr. Wolf? No. Mr. Gordon? Mr. Slaughter? No. Mr. Solomon? Aye. 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 Four members have been voted in the affirmative, four in the negative. The motion is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Uh, I move that we make an order, uh, Amendment Number 40, which uh, Mr. Zimmer offered. It requires mandatory minimum five-year prison term for unlawful possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, a fugitive from justice, a drug addict, or illegal drug user or one who transfers or receives stolen firearms without possibility of parole, suspended, or concurrent sentence. It doubles penalties for certain violations of firearms law and increases penalties for use or possession of a firearm in the commission of a violent crime or drug trafficking. What this amendment does, Mr. Chairman, is it gets right at the root of the problem, recognizing that people who um, are committing these crimes are the ones we should be able to get at, those who are using the, the firearms, and I think that these minimum sentences could go a long way towards uh, towards addressing the problem, and I hope we can make it in order. Any questions or comments on the gentleman's motion? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 We have record vote, Mr. Chairman. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Harris. Mr. Bielens. No. Mr. Frost. Mr. Bond. No. Mr. Hall. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Four members having voted in the affirmative, four in the negative. The gentleman's motion is not carried. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move that we make an order of uh, Mr. Zimmer's Amendment Number 41, which limits remedies available in district court for a successful challenge to the constitutionality of conditions of confinement, specifically denying the court jurisdiction to impose population ceilings, adjust release dates, or prohibit use of tents or prefabricated housing structures that requires consent decrees regarding conditions of confinement also to provide only narrowly tailored relief. Thanks. Mr. Dreyer, let me, let me just um, tell, tell my friend from California that this apparently is virtually identical, maybe identical, to one which already has been, I think, Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Guerin's uh, is it? amendment. So I think we've taken care of that. But in any case, the gentleman may certainly proceed if he wishes. Thank you. And uh, I uh, ask that we vote on Mr. Zimmer's amendment. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd ask that we vote on this amendment number 41, which we debated in your absence, Mr. Chairman. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what's the uh, text of it? Oh, you want me to go through it again? No, no. I just want to know the text of it. Oh. Yeah. I'm told that it's oh. very similar to another amendment that's already yeah, been I'm included, but I'd like to still offer Mr. Zimmer's amendment, Mr. Chairman. All right. Question comes on the amendment of the gentleman from California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. We have a recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrett, Mr. Nealon. No. Mr. Frost, Mr. Bonner. No. Mr. Hall, Mr. Wheat. No. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter. No. Mr. Solomon. No. Mr. Hi. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. No. Uh, 
Four members uh, having voted in the affirmative, five in the, you know, in the negative, uh, the motion is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, that was the uh, last of the Republican amendments that we have to offer, and now we'd like to step forward on behalf of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle who have been denied their opportunity. You want to offer Barker? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, you have a list of uh, alphabetical list, I think, which includes Republican and Democrat amendments. Uh, the uh, under the alphabetical list under Barca, uh, is he the gentleman that took the place of Les Aspen? Yes, yeah. believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he has an amendment uh, that uh, says that violent felonies against truckers should be prosecuted to the fullest extent under federal law, and it encourages public-private evaluation of how best to prevent these crimes. It is a sense of Congress resolution, but we all. How come it's not on? That amendment has been made in order. Okay. It's on the unblock. In that case, but that's a great idea you have, Jerry. It, it certainly is. We would we would withdraw it, and we would uh, yield to the gentleman, Mr. Uh, Dreyer, to offer the uh, Berman amendment. Mr. Chairman, I move that we make an order, Mr. Berman's amendment, which authorizes the Attorney General, subject to appropriations to reimburse states and localities for the cost of incarcerating undocumented criminal aliens who have been convicted of a felony. This is uh, an amendment that Mr. Berman has worked on uh, at great length uh, with our governor in California. This is a major concern that we have. Unfunded federal mandates are imposed on state and local governments, and tragically, we require the states to provide all of these things, including here um, the uh, incarceration of undocumented criminal aliens, and it seems to me that we should provide for reimbursement if we're going to continue to impose these unfunded mandates. I think Mr. Berman's amendment should be made in order. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Mr. If, uh, we. If, if I might ask the gentleman to withhold making his motion at, at this particular time, I'm still examining several points on this amendment and probably will finish that examination well before this this hearing is closed today and, and we're just about done from offering amendments over here I mean we have about two more amendments I I, I, I do not intend to preclude you from offering the amendment I'm yeah. considering whether no, no. or not I will I'm, support it yeah right no no I'm 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 just stating that I hope it can be done pretty quickly because I, I, I will get it done quickly and great if we're not and I'm done happy to withhold out of deference to my friend uh, with the gentleman you happy to yield my friend thank you um, as the gentleman probably does know, the proposal in the rule before us, uh, the, original, the original rule proposal would have made Mr. Berman's amendment in order. In effect, Mr. Berman's amendment, which I strongly support, is, is, is really a, a restatement of existing law. I mean, we could, uh, we could do this under existing law, under the old 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act. We've never appropriated the monies, that's the problem. As the gentleman is, is undoubtedly aware, uh, an amendment which I've authored and which others are co-authoring uh, is we propose to make an order which would require reimbursement by the federal government of state incarcerations of people who are here illegally. And it occurs to this gentleman, hope, who hopes it occurs to, the, to his friend from Southern California, that we, we, may, we may lose some of the pressure or the votes or the, or, the, or the strength for our stronger real amendment, which would require the, re, you know, the funding by the federal government if we give people an ability to vote to just authorize it again, which is already an existing law. People can say they voted for the Berman Amendment, why do they have to vote for the other one? And well, that's, that's my concern, David. Okay, I, I, I'm very sympathetic. Obviously, I want to do what we can. I mean, one's real and one is concerns. Yours is real. Okay, well, Mine's I mean, real. I mean, so, but I, what then brought about Howard's amendment then? Howard's yeah. amendment was made in order originally. Right. Uh, because. But I mean, you're saying that's the one mine that's wasn't. Not, you're saying that that's one that's not real and so yeah. it's. Okay, well. Uh, Mr. Mr. Berman is co-sponsoring my amendment, yes, although okay. obviously, and I would have, co would have co-sponsored his. It's just that I think now, the, the one that we currently propose to make an order is much stronger and much more okay. real. The one that I this. see, the, the explanation of your amendment says it requires the federal government to share in costs of incarcerating undocumented aliens convicted in state courts. Now, what is the interpretation of share in costs? Well, I, don't, I, don't I don't know who wrote that description okay. of it, but I think it's inadequate. Is it, it requires okay. them to either pay for it or to incarcerate it themselves. Okay. Well, then, then that, uh, you know, this, this whole issue... argument to you, right. David, I, I think yeah. it might lessen our chance of getting the stronger yeah. amendment adopted. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very sympathetic with that, and uh, I suspect that uh, that was the reason you didn't make it in order, but... Uh, in, in that case, I'm happy to withdraw the Berman Amendment. Thank you. Mr. Other, for, uh, Mr. Goss. Yeah, following on that point, in the same subject area, you may, may or may not be aware that the governor of Florida, who is a 
former senator of some note and distinction in this town and in our state uh, is now a uh, so frustrated with this situation in Florida that he's suing the federal government. I mean, he's, I think Janet Reno and, and other parties are specifically I think named. we may have joined him, our state, but I'm not sure. Well, I hope you have because we, we get into this area and I accept your explanation of the, of the crafting of the Bielinson uh, skills on top of the Berman uh, beginning, which is what I think we are hearing is, is going to be in the en bloc amendment. But what it I want to be in the own block. I mean, I think it may have to be debated separately, but it's being proposed to be made in order under our rule. Okay, so we are going to go forward. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm reminded that, and I, I owe it to, to our colleagues here, that we've cured our original amendment, which we did not make an order. In this one, we have made an order so that it has no Budget Act violations. Okay, thank you. That's because the requirement for spending unfortunately is put off until after the, you know, after the purview of the current budget resolution. No, I understand that. Uh, and I, I, I understand that there are some technical problems there that are hard to overcome. I think we've solved the technical problems. I, I hope you have. Now, now if we can solve the money flow, we'll really have it. That leads me to my questions about Mr. Condit's amendments, number 156 and 157, which seem to finish the effort here. Uh, I have not seen all the language of the Bielinson Amendment, obviously, because I don't have it in front of me. The Condit Amendments, I do recall, uh, and they do solve the problem pretty well for a state like Florida. Uh, what can you tell me about that, that I shouldn't make, make a motion to put the Condit Amendments in order? I don't think you need to make the Condit Amendment in order, unless Mr. Condit perhaps can get more votes for it than Mr. Bielinson and his colleagues, including Mr. Condit, who I hope and expect will be a co-sponsor. The uh, proposals are virtually identical. Do, uh, you're, you're assuming then that we will have Mr. Condit's support yes. and no followers of Mr. Condit for the Condit Amendment uh, for the bielinson berman Amendment. I should certainly That's think so. That's the representation I'm hearing. This, this amendment of, that we're proposing here is in effect the, the, the text of a bill which I and some of my Democratic colleagues from California introduced three or four weeks ago. Uh, Mr. Condit at the same time introduced a separate bill of his own. I, I'm aware term. of that. This is, this is, I think it's fair to say, virtually identical the two bills are virtually identical. The two amendments are virtually identical. Uh, and, they and require, starting in 1998, the reimbursement by the federal government or the incarceration by the federal government of state prisoners who are illegal. And, and it does authorize reimbursement of states for incarceration? Yes. Okay. It requires you. it. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it not the Berman one authorizes, authorizes it, which it has is just a restatement of existing law. This okay. requires it. That it sounds to me like that solved the problem, in which case I will not, in that, at, at this time, bring for either of those amendments forward. Um, I think uh, I, I, I mean, I, I think I can assure him that there's that he should be happy with with the okay. outcome Mr. of Chairman, your. I'm satisfied with that. Thank you. Yield you for a minute, Mr. Yield. Chairman. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to uh, explain to uh, our colleague from Missouri, Mr. Weed, exactly what happened. That I withdrew the Berman Amendment uh, because Tony has an amendment which he argues is even stronger than that, so you don't need to. And it is my understanding that uh, that every analysis I have seen does indicate that, in fact, the Bielinson Amendment is the stronger of the amendments be between the two. I just want you to know that so you don't have to anguish over it any further. Mr. Chairman. We're a little bit at sea on a few of these areas, and in the interest of saving time and not being redundant, Mr. Clement of Tennessee's number four amendment, the, the Drug-Free Truck Stop Act, is that substantially provided for in the Barca Amendment, which I understand is now in? I, I'm sorry that I have to ask these questions, but I, I, I have no way of knowing. The Barca Amendment. It is, but it's even more so in the Long Amendment. It's more so in the what? In the, the Long Amendment. Okay. Uh, the DeLauro Amendment, number 55. This is, uh, this is uh, authorizing special grants to states that enact laws to revoke the driver's license of anyone who brings a handgun into the elementary or secondary school zone that the revocation is immediate and automatic upon receipt of notification from principal or equivalent official, and that the revocation is for five years, first offense, ten years for further. We had testimony on that here. Uh, I have no indication that provision has been provided for. No, it has not because we didn't touch anything dealt with guns at all. We didn't deal with guns at all, but the, the guns in school aspect is a serious problem, and this provides a penalty. So I, I would like to move that we make an order uh, that the Laurel Amendment number 5-5, uh, as I've just described, to which she testified in some 
some uh, detail. Question comes on the motion of the gentleman from uh, Florida. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Aye. No. The no's appear to have it. Respectfully ask for recorded vote on. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielenzar, Mr. Frost, Mr. Bond, no. Mr. Hall, Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Miller, aye. Mr. Meyer, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. Uh, well, uh, um, four, can you withhold? Uh, <laughs> four members having uh, voted in the uh, positive, five in the negative, the motion is not adopted. I want to take it in order if I can. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Harmon, who is a Democrat from California, is she from California, uh, has an amendment which. Uh, is the subject of uh, of a debate in the uh, in the United States and in this Congress, and uh, the question is whether or not we ought to pass laws that uh, take away the rights of uh, law-abiding citizens to uh, to uh, have and possess uh, guns. And uh, I vehemently oppose that kind of legislation. Uh, she has an amendment which uh, is the direction I think we ought to be going in, and that is that uh, she would deny felons convicted of violent or, or drug-related crimes the right to appeal to uh, the BAT, a Bureau of Tobacco and Firearms, for the right to own firearms. Now, that is the direction that we ought to be going in. Now, I am the last person that would ever want to withhold the right of anyone to, to, uh, to have uh, possession of a, uh, of a legal weapon, uh, but this is a case where that person has, uh, has given up their right to, to have a weapon. And, uh, I don't understand why we couldn't make this amendment in order. It's supported by both sides of the aisle. It's a reasonable um, uh, amendment, and uh, I would hope that uh, this committee would see fit to make her amendment in order. Any discussion? If not, on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have Chairman, it. Might we have a recorded vote? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Bielenso. Mr. Cross. Mr. Bonnier, no. Mr. Hall, Mr. Lee, no. Mr. Gordon, Ms. Slaughter, no. Mr. Solomon, aye. Mr. Quillen, aye. Mr. Dryer, aye. Mr. Goss, aye. Mr. Chairman, no. <laughs> Four members have voted the affirmative, five and the negative. The motion, the gentleman, is not adopted. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm awfully sorry that you know, that you really couldn't consider that amendment. Um, you have another good Democrat on the other side of the aisle. Uh, his name is Mr. Orton, and... Uh, we're just showing you we're not discriminating between Democrats uh, and Republicans. Oh, no, I think I've got the list of discrimination in my pocket here. Oh. I, just, I just had it here a minute ago. Here it is on the floor. You were stepping on it, Mr. Chairman. It shows that uh, 43 no. Democrat amendments have been made in order, 18 Republican amendments have been in order. Well, that's discrimination. But uh, let me get back to Mr. Wharton. I want to make the discrimination worse. Oh, you got 21 now. <laughs> we gave you three. Uh -huh. you those? No, I think we gave us one and a half. Uh, gave you three. No, they were supported by, by Democrats alike, though. Those are bipartisan. Let me get back to Mr. Wharton's amendment, because his amendment would create a new category of federal prosecution against child abuse and endangerment for inflicting serious physical injury on a minor or permitting another to inflict such injury on a minor under one's care of custody. Mr. Orton came up here and he gave uh, very, very uh, uh, cogent testimony uh, on this amendment. Uh, it has wide support on both sides of the aisle. All four of us on the Republican side intend to vote for it, and I would hope that you would support it on your side. It's a very reasonable amendment, Mr. Chairman. This has been handled very carefully on the bill under the Ramstead Amendment. No, it's, again, it's different. It's substantially the same thing. <laughs> well, I would move the amendment, right. Mr. Chairman. Question comes on the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have a recorded vote. Clerk of Colorado. No. Four members having voted in the affirmative, six in the negative, the most of the gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Quillen. The same as Democrats in Illinois has an amendment, number 12. 
Bandon, Utah, and Bandon 175 specifically named semi-automatic weapons. And however, we vote on the floor. I think that this distinguished Democrat should have the right to have his amendment voted on. Yes, I, you may not have been in the room, Jim. Uh, the, the Chairman Brooks is coming out with a, a bill on semi-automatics within two weeks, which all we uh, as many as all the bills I know of, semi-automatics will be included. You don't do that? Yeah. No, well, Mr. Chairman, that is... Uh, Chairman Brooks is going to bring... In two weeks. That's semi-automatics. Semi-automatic. Well, well, maybe if he doesn't, we should have a vote. However, we vote on the floor, and I'm... Take a question look comes on the motion, probably General. Won't support it on the floor, but I think he has a right to offer oh. Question comes on the motion, General Tennessee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. The no's have it. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bielson, Mr. Voss, Mr. Bonner, Mr. Hall, Mr. Weeks, Mr. Gordon, Mr. Slaughter, Mr. Sullivan, aye. Mr. Gordon, aye. Mr. Dryer, aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman. No. Four members have voted in the affirmative. Six and the negative of the motion. The gentleman is not adopted. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I move that we make an order, and I'd uh, ask that they be considered in block uh, three amendments by Mr. Trafficant, number 17, 18, and 20. And uh, I'd move that we uh, consider those, and I'll just ask for one vote on all three of those amendments. Question comes in the motion, gentlemen, California. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The no's appear to have it. We have a record vote, Mr. Clerk, Chairman. Call the roll. Mr. Derrick, Mr. Bielsen, Mr. Frost, Mr. Bond, no. Mr. Dreyer, 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 no. Mr.
under the rule that we're, uh, we've adopted, that's pending rather, it, it doesn't allow for this, but they could be done by unanimous consent on the floor, and I would not object if that makes any difference. And that's pretty much true of uh, everyone on, the, on our side of the aisle then? I, I don't well, I, I, I appreciate your, uh, your concern. I see some heads nodding. See, as I say, I can't make assurance no, for the House. Okay, well, I just want to call your attention to it because uh, yeah. they both are valuable members of this House. They both are extremely knowledgeable, and uh, if we can accommodate them, uh, it certainly would show comity on both sides of the aisle. Okay. And uh, we have very little comity in, in this rule as it is, and uh, I am very much disappointed that we were unable to come up with uh, something that we could truly negotiate out like we did with the, um, with the defense authorization bill. And, uh, uh, it's just a shame, Mr. Chairman, because I hear rumblings downstairs on the floor right now. Um, I know our Republican leadership just finished meeting. They are very upset with the rules uh, that is being proposed, and uh, uh, I just don't uh, see it helping uh, helping this body get through its uh, its workload between now and uh, the time we have to adjourn, which is not that far away, believe it or not. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, I have one other amendment I'd like to offer here, if I might. It's a very interesting amendment that comes from one of my California colleagues, Ms. Waters, which creates a new title, the voting rights for former offenders, to provide that the voting rights of a U.S. citizen who otherwise is qualified to vote in any election for federal office shall not be denied or abridged because he or she has committed a criminal offense unless such citizen is imprisoned in a correctional institution or facility or has not completed his or her full sentence at the time of such election. I'm not terribly supportive of this, but it is an interesting idea which I think should be debated on the House floor, and I move that we make the amendment in order. Well, I'm terribly non-supportive of it, but I move we make it in order, too. So you'll support me on my attempt yes. to make it in order. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that word of support. Any words of wisdom? What are you trying to do? Make a very interesting amendment in order here. It sure is. Because Question comes from the motion, gentlemen, California. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Oh, we should have a record. Guys, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Question, uh, question. Oh, oh. Mr. 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 Solomon. Mr. Solomon. Aye. Mr. Aye, Jim. All right, Oh, no. Vote no if you want. Mr. Cryer. Aye. Mr. Goss. Aye. 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 No. Four members have voted affirmative, five in the negative. The motion of uh, gentlemen in California is not adopted. Any other amendments? Anything for the good of motion. This vote on my original motion. What was your original motion? <laughs> The question now comes on the original motion. As amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. The ayes appear to have it. <laughs> appear to have it? Yeah. The record yeah, vote Sure. Yeah. Let's see how the, how the recorded vote comes out. Mr. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Derrick. Mr. Bielens. Aye. Mr. Frost. Mr. Bond. Aye. Mr. Hall. Aye. Mr. Mr. Weed. Mr. Gordon. Ms. Slaughter. Aye. Mr. Solomon. No. Mr. Quillen. No. Dryer. No. Mr. Cross. No. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Good to see you all. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Thanks. Four members have voted. Six members have voted in the affirmative. Four in the negative. The motion is adopted. Mr. Derrick of uh, uh, South Carolina will carry for the majority. Mr. Derrick? Mr. Derrick. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, Mr. Goss of uh, Sanibel, Florida, will carry for the Republicans. That's fine. And Mr. Chairman, uh, when might we uh, meet again, this uh, August body? Well, I'm not doing anything tonight. <laughs> I don't. Uh, anything pending? I don't know. I don't George? Know. We don't have anything. No. Unless the conference will be able Hope not. <laughs> Committee of Rules will stand adjourned. Okay, pal. The House Rules Committee took up the crime bill Tuesday, debating how that debate would be handled once the legislation arrives on the floor of the House. Sixty-eight amendments will be considered. 
43 Democratic, 21 Republican, and 4 Bipartisan. The bill calls for $15 billion to be used to build prisons, hire new police officers, and otherwise prevent crime. The Senate last year passed a $22 billion crime effort. At the main branch of the Toledo Lucas County Public Library, Mayor Carlton Finkbeiner recently told us about his city and its